Good evening and welcome to Paul's Spare Time. Uh -oh. And I need to mute that. Uh, on the screen there will be... Let's try that again. We've got a little bit of a new setup here this evening, and I've got a couple of special guests. But uh, good evening and welcome to Paul's Spare Time. I had the audio on on my laptop. Thank you all for popping in. I just looked. It looks like Rob's not quite done yet, so we might be here a little bit early. Uh, good evening, Michael and Lord Zachary Burnett. Good evening, Treasure Hall. Kevin Nolan Denmo. Stan Horn, good to see you, Christopher Brock, Michael Jurek, Jim Cantor, Scott Teske, Typewriter Maniac, Jay Money, good evening, welcome, welcome, happy Wednesday to everyone, I need to do some introducing here, we have a couple of our uh, subscribers have uh, driven over today, all the way from Tennessee, 10 hours, stuck behind uh, the bridge that got closed on Interstate 40 because of a crack in it. Uh, they were on the world's biggest parking lot there for a while. And uh, they've come over to visit with Paul Spare Time tonight, pick up some of their wins that they've had and some other things. But with me on the far left, with the fine-looking beard, not that you both don't both have fine-looking <laughs> beards, but in the blue shirt... Okay, I don't know how they're showing up. <laughs> is uh, Pastor Tim? Hello, everyone. Welcome, Pastor Tim. And next to me, which you can't see me, this is the other Jimmy. You all have seen the other Jimmy in this stream and other streams. Uh, you all know the one Jimmy, Jimmy Lacari. I don't know if he's in here lurking somewhere, but Jimmy Lacari has a, a tendency to win uh, prizes on streams. And uh, this is the other Jimmy, and uh, they happen to be brother-in-laws. And they spent 10 hours in the car today to come over and visit Paul's spare time. So uh, welcome them to the stream. This is a first for us. So if we have any technical difficulties, that's on Paul, because uh, we're learning along the way. Treasure Hawk says, uh, Pastor Tim at the other Jimmy. What's up, guys? <laughs> Shannon Smith says, hey, hey, Paul's spare time, the other Jimmy and Pastor Tim. Very yeah. good. A little tired, but we might do. A lot of driving. So, uh, yeah, Pastor Tim had been accumulating uh, box donation uh, uh, prizes. I donated for a full box last week. He had some auction wins. He had some gauze. And he kept saying, just hold them, just hold them. I'm going to come over there. And we've been trying to do this for several weeks now. And uh, he's got a friend that lives in Arkansas, and uh, he and Jimmy were going to swing by and see the friend, and uh, they swung by there on the way up here today. And uh, so he's finally got all his treasures that he has had uh, waiting for him for a long, long time. And for the first time in history, did you just come to take our gas? Yeah, that's it. They're out of gas in Tennessee, so they're yeah. they're stealing the gas in plastic bags, putting it in their trunk, and going home. Um, so the first time in history, Pastor Tim is going to open his own mulligan box because Pastor Tim was one of the donators this past Saturday and got skunked. So this time, it's not going to be Paul's fault if he gets skunked again. Because he gets to pick the box, he gets to open the box, the other Jimmy is going to be uh, checking the coins for errors and varieties, so they're going to work as a team, and Paul kind of gets the night off. I get to sit over here and just talk to you all, so uh, that's just pretty darn cool. I see Stan Horn in the stream. Stan, if you're here long enough this evening, um, you will be uh, the mulligan box too. So uh, I know I saw you. Um, so if you're here long enough, or maybe I didn't see Stan, maybe I saw, uh, who did I see? Well, I saw Michael Zurich. We did you last night, Michael, so you've got a package coming. Um, I think, I don't remember. Did we do you first? And you, you might have, no, we did Treasure Hog first. You wouldn't have liked your box, Michael. 
You would not have liked your box. Can Can, good to see you. So, J.D. Francis, good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Christopher Brock, I think I said hi, but if not, hello. So, we are, you all know this, but on the right, the people in blue, which is Can Can right now, they are the moderators. They're here to help you. The people in green are our members. Uh, you can become a member of Paul Spare Time for as little as 99 cents a month, and you get your name up in green. You get some special emojis. You get a special badge, and it's just cool, but you don't have to do that. You can just be here, and we uh, welcome you and uh, hope you watch along and have a great time with us. So, making history here at Paul Spare Time. Making history. This is still a family channel, even though Hudson's not here. He's sleeping. He did give permission for Pastor Tim to sit in his chair and search tonight and the other Jimmy to come in. He is aware of what is happening. But we are going to start this stream. We are going to do two boxes. Uh, there will be giveaways at the end of the two boxes. Uh, we will do it with the raffle like we usually do on these streams. So uh, with uh, no further ado, I should say that this week's boxes I did pick up today. And I got all 10 boxes. Uh, there was no problem. I got all five boxes of nickels. The only problem with that is they were all 2021 Ds. But uh, I did get uh, four boxes of pennies and they were all circulated. So I figure I came out okay. And no one mentioned anything about having any coin shortage or problem getting boxes next week. Jim Cantor. Yes, uh, the other Jimmy will be checking for DDOs. He's going to be checking a uh, few more than I usually do. He's got a longer list. So uh, he's going to be checking for DDOs. He's got his own scope here. So if he finds something, we'll move it over to my scope and show you. But this week's boxes are named the Pastor Tim boxes. How appropriate. <laughs> Sorry, the other Jimmy. I, I had to pick one. Uh, so Pastor Tim has selected box... Pastor Tim 8, PT8, and uh, he has it there under the, uh, under the camera. If you want to turn that sideways, I think on the uh, left side of that, if you want to lift the lip up, they can see the PT8 on it. There you go, PT8, and pause fine handwriting. There's Stan Horn. Stan Horn, you will have the second box tonight if you hang with us. If that doesn't work for you, we can do it another night. So, Pastor Tim, crack that box. Let's check for enders. Do you want a glove? I've got gloves over here if you want a glove. You don't have to wear one. You are okay? Yeah. Would you like a glove, Jimmy? Nope. Okay. I'll search for the... This is... I can't see where they are or not. Uh, you can adjust that light back there anywhere you want to uh, to help you out. Hello, Rashurik. Good to see you, Rob Wenzel in the house. For those of you just coming in, we have a couple of guests this evening. We've got Pastor Tim that's going to be unwrapping his own box, uh, his own mulligan box, because he got skunked on uh, Wednesday night, on Saturday night. We didn't really plan it this way. It just kind of fell this way when he could finally come. And his brother-in-law, the other Jimmy, also a uh, frequent guest in our, our viewer in our streams, is going to be checking for DDOs and varieties. So, those that's who is here with me. So make sure and say hi to them. I don't think either one of you, uh, do either one of you have a YouTube channel that you want to push and get subscribers for? No. No? no. All right. <laughs> I don't. So just wish that they find silver. That's what we're going to do. Janelle Sound says, hi, Pastor Tim. Hello. J.D. Francis says, hey, the other Jimmy. Hello. <laughs> All right. I ain't fast as Hudson. Can Can Collectible <laughs> says, hi, Pastor Tim, and hello, the other Jimmy. Hello. Hello. Pastor Tim is looking for Enders. Don't think he's having any luck. We no, might have to find some enough. insiders. I uh, did, we are protecting the Avercurt boxes tonight. Uh, I did uh, send an Avercurt box out that was broken open to uh, one of our subscribers. They purchased one and they opened AV6 today. 
got and opened AV6 today, and they found a 90 and 240s and a lot of NIFSIs uh, in AV6. So if you remember, those Avergurt boxes had been having a lot of clean, great-looking coins, and they'd been having a lot of uh, of uh, NIFSIs in it. And looks like we finally are running into the silver part. So feeling good about those uh, AV boxes coming up. Jim Cantor, they let me go home this afternoon. Good deal, Jim Cantor. I'm glad you're out of the hospital. I hope you're feeling well, and I hope they got you all fixed up. Just in time, Adam Coles. Just in time. All right. So I really don't have an excuse not to uh, do the chat well tonight. All right, let her rip, Pastor Tim. It's all yours. Hudson's screwdriver too. So. He's got a Hudson screwdriver. <laughs> we'll see if Hudson left any magic in that screwdriver. Paul's screwdriver is over here. If we oh, would you like to wave anything over the box, Pastor Tim? Or are you good? I'm good. You're good. <laughs> all right. We'll use the lucky screwdriver and go from there. Hold on, Tim. Perry Moreno in the house. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. I think I see anything. Hopefully we find some silver and some red clad for Pastor Tim. We'll see. It's not going to be my fault tonight if we don't find anything. <laughs> You want to move that camera back maybe a little bit more, Jimmy? This it may pick you both up better. Yeah, we got at least half of both of you. We're good. I'll just move We're on. good. <laughs> and hello, Adinmo. Good to see you. Uh, Grammy did make did make chocolate chip cookies this evening, and I'm going to say that we have uh, we have perhaps already been into the chocolate chip cookies. That might be why we started a little later than usual. It's possible. Kick your feet back, Paul. Enjoy the show. Exactly, Jay Money. I got nothing to do but chat with you all. We could probably come up with some stories, but we may have to hear some uh, Jimmy and Tim stories tonight. Because uh, Pastor Tim was telling me an alligator story a while ago that's uh, pretty darn amazing that uh, I'll probably have him share with you. He and Jimmy went on a uh, alligator hunt. Down with the uh, swamp people and uh, had some fun. John Jacobs, good to see you, JJ. Already tired, but otherwise okay. Shannon, it's too early to be tired. <laughs> Trying hey. to talk. Uh, <laughs> Pastor Tim and uh, Jimmy into going to our coin show that starts here tomorrow at the Double Tree. Starts at 9 a.m. tomorrow. I think Hudson and I and Shannon Smith and uh, Treasure Hog are all going to meet there Saturday, maybe, uh, if they can do it around noon and uh, check it out. But it does start tomorrow. Dinbo, Paul got your baby walker today. It's much bigger than it looks on the screen. Thanks so much. <laughs> Ah, thanks, Denmo. I'm glad you like it. I may have wa watered it a little bit and made it grow on the way. I'm just glad the post office got it there because I got an email from somebody that should have had their baby walker a couple weeks ago today, and they did not get it, and uh, that's never good. But, uh, yeah, relax, John Jacobs. I, I'm just hanging, man. These two got it. You know, we got... Uh, 50 rolls to go through. Paul's, Paul's just, I go get the chocolate chip cookies. I can order pizza. Uh, you you got to search those before you drop them yeah. in a bucket. That, that That's not going to work. You'll get done quicker, but I don't think you're, you're not going to find anything. And that's going to be hard to get through the, uh, the coin counter at the bank, too. Yeah. 10.30 p.m. here. It's getting late. Yeah, 10.30 here also. But, uh, you know, Paul doesn't sleep a lot, so uh, uh, I wish I could. I just don't. I just don't. That would be cool. Get in the show while they're here. Yeah, but don't let them buy all the good stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of think they feel like they might be at a coin show here in the coin compound because I, 
I have caught them eyeing Hudson oh. Shelf. <laughs> They've been looking at all the new peanut stuff I got in today. Uh, my DDO or my uh, uh, Nifsey collection. I'm talking about two and three cent pieces, and I even had those hidden. And uh, they sniffed those out. So I, I don't know. We may start a coin show later tonight. <laughs> it is possible. It is yeah. possible. Yeah. Good to see you, John Jacobs. And if you find some shiny ones, Pastor Tim, you want for your book, you're welcome to keep uh, any of those. Now, you can't keep all 1,000 coins in the box, though. That just <laughs> does not work well for Paul. Getting late, that's why it's Coinsomniacs, absolutely. Two nights in a row with the Coinsomniacs. Hope you all had a great Wednesday. Michael Faddis, good to see you. Sorry I'm late. Was watching the end of RFT. Got my new phone with unlimited data so I can stay longer. All right, Michael, that's cool. Cody Bird, good evening. Hello, the tool freak. So uh, did, uh, I, I checked in uh, real quick and saw Rob was still doing some auction items when we started at about 10.15. Did Rob have any luck finding silver tonight? I hope he had a good stream and a lot of fun. Crafty Dragon, good evening. Good to see you. For all y'all coming in, I've got a couple guests here. Uh, in, in the uh, lighter blue shirt is Pastor Tim. And in the darker blue, it's purple here, is uh, the other Jimmy. They're both uh, subscribers to our channel. I know uh, you may both be members. Uh, Pastor Tim, I think you're a member. We'll have to work on the other Jimmy while he's here and see if we can uh, get that 99 cents a month out of him while he's over here in Arkansas. I don't know. Um, but uh, they're frequently in our, uh, in our streams. And Pastor Tim had been gathering uh, his uh, gall wins and a couple of donations he had made to the stream. Uh, I think you got uh, penny rolls and you got maybe half dollars twice. Is yeah. that right? Uh -huh. So uh, he was accumulating uh, in the auction. He bought a treasure chest. And so his goodies had been collecting over here. And he kept saying he was going to come get them. So he popped over tonight. So uh, Paul's like, yeah, heck. They're here, let's put them to work. <laughs> Where were you when I was carrying the coins in earlier today? We waited till you got on I forty. <laughs> on I forty parked forever. That's for sure. Uh, but uh, it is this. We've never done this before. Uh, Treasure Hog and Shannon Smith have been here, but not at stream time before. But uh, we're doing a little uh, little guest host deal tonight, so we're glad to have both of them here. They drove over ten hours. Uh, now, this was not their sole purpose for the trip, although perhaps the most fun part of the trip, if we find anything, Pastor Tim. Um, but they drove 10 hours to be here, and they're going to drive home 10 hours tomorrow. So uh, we're, we're really glad to have them here. Be sure and be very welcoming of them and root them on to find some silver. I want to see them chicken dance, because if we find silver, we are doing the chicken dance. Oh, no. It's <laughs> mandatory. We have to call Hudson. He'll break out the whip. Caveman911, it's good to see you. Welcome, welcome. I don't know if I missed anybody. I got no excuses for missing anybody tonight because Paul gets the kickback. We are on roll number five, I believe, uh, in the box. So we've got a lot of box left to find some silver. This is, I guess I can put it on the uh, screen as well. This is the Pastor Tim 8 box. So we're going to call those the PT8. Uh, Pastor Tim got to pick what box he wanted, and surprisingly, he picked from this week's uh, pickup the uh, PT8 boxes, or the PT boxes, and he selected PT8 because the 8 has a little sentimental value to go with it. So we're hoping that these PT boxes are good. We are hoping that they are good. Don't know. First time we've been inside of them. We're going to find out. He is uh, handing potential air and variety coins to the other Jimmy, and he is checking those out to see if we can pop a DDO or a no FG or something really cool. How about a 77 no F? Uh, 77 no FG? No, just no F. Oh, no F. All right. Let me put my scope up here for a second. 
This is one that I typically do not search for. We've got a 77. No F. I see a light F. Yeah, the but, line F is okay because this is a grease strike. It's not an actual missing element. Yeah, and I'm on like so. 75X zoom too. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> all right. Would you like that in a flip? I'll be glad to flip it for you. Yeah, go ahead. All right. We've got a 1977 No F which is one of the varieties that uh, the other Jimmy and Pastor Tim look for and keep. So we will get this one flipped up. Bring out the new stapler. Man, I out staples, right? <laughs> <laughs> the last one was like uh, having a really hard time with the staples and I had to, I had to uh, put it out of its misery. <laughs> Is that a 77P, Jimmy? It is, isn't it? Yeah. Paul still gets to flip. I got a little bit of work to do. <laughs> Just not much. This is May 12th of 2021. Put that over there. Are those just shinies or are those nifties? Those shinies. Shinies, all right. Got a couple shiny ones out of the box that uh, they can uh, check their books and see if uh, they can uh, upgrade their books. Jack Galman, hello, good to see you. You snuck in on me. Stan Horn, I'm glad there's someone else that opens rolls like we. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm no good at hey you're done. doing fine, you're doing fine. Paul has gained speed as we have started. You all know Hudson is twice as fast as me almost. But uh, nothing gets by Paul. We do it at a, uh, a slower pace, and we're doing it at Pastor Tim pace right now. <laughs> and the next box will be at the other Jimmy pace, because he gets the next box to open. And if Stan Horn is still here, it will be for you, Stan Horn, because you and Walker Magnet are the two mulligans I have left. Sandy H., good to see you. Paul, RFT had a four box hunt, only five boxes to choose from, no silver tonight. Ooh, so did he mention having a hard time getting coins then, Michael Fallis? I wonder if he didn't get his coins in his pickup then. That's not uh, great. RFT raid. All right, Copper Owl coins. Hello, RFTers. Good to see you. I was just asking what was happening on RFT. I know it was fun. I was visiting with uh, Pastor Tim and the other Jimmy, two of our subscribers that have joined us here. Tonight, they drove 10 hours to come over. Pastor Tim is opening his own mulligan box. First time ever. Yeah, easy night for me. That's right, Rob Nicole. So you're a flipping store. I'm a flipping storyteller. That's what I am. <laughs> you're right, Jim Cantor. That's right. Numismaniac, good to see you. Hello from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Welcome, welcome. J.D. Francis says, good night, everyone. Got to get up early for work. Take care, be safe, and God bless. You too, J.D. Francis. Get a good night's sleep. Have a great day at work tomorrow. Yeah, welcome, welcome, RFT Raiders. We appreciate you. Charlotte got distracted and forgot the auction was going on, Paul. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oopsie. <laughs> kind of zoned out. I've done that. Copper Al Coin says, hello, Pastor Tim. Hello. Good to be here. Bender Bending, good to see you. He has boxes to pick up boxes for Friday. Okay. Um, I'm hearing a lot of rumblings on uh, in the chats about coin shortage. I got my entire order today. All my nickels were 2021s, which does me no good. But I did get my entire order. And uh, my other bank, as I was dropping off coins this morning, and I was telling them that I had cracked open all of my 2021s and dumped them in buckets to bring them back, he says, uh, you know, if the boxes are still sealed, you can just uh, bring those back in the boxes and we'll take them that way. It'd probably be easier for both of us. And I'm like, now you tell me. <laughs> I said for three hours and cracked coins that were 2021s. 
Paul, you said he's picking up nine boxes for Friday night. The auction was great. Good deal, Michael. I'm glad he's still getting boxes, and Rob's auctions are always really good. Rob was the inspiration for Hudson and I. I found Rob's channel after I broke my leg, and uh, he was the inspiration for uh, us getting started hunting coins and learning a little bit about this, and we're still learning. Um, but uh, love me some RFT. Rob and Charlani have had a chance to meet them. Great people. And a really fun stream to watch. So Bender Bending, what did you think of those little silver car, uh, uh, I don't know if I can call them coins, but uh, that you got your auction win that you got in the mail today? Why would there be a coin shortage? More coins were made in 2020 than 2019. There was never a shortage, circulation issues due to COVID. Yes, but that, yeah, I, I can only think of one thing, Copper Owl Coins, that makes a little bit of sense to me, is that business is starting to break loose. People are back out shopping now, and maybe a lot of businesses that haven't had to go get coins and stuff are having to restock in the short term, and they're taking some coins out that uh, nobody planned for, and maybe that's causing a temporary shortage. But for anyone to be saying there's a shortage of half dollars is just silly because half dollars for the most part aren't in circulation. We're lucky to still have them and there's no reason that half dollars would be short unless they're getting set aside by Loomis and Wells Fargo while they're sorting other coins to get them out. But uh, so far so good. I'm still getting my coins. Uh, so I'm happy that we got uh, our 10 boxes today. Very happy. Rob Winslow says, Pastor Tim, I'm so jealous of your beard. <laughs> well, Rob Winslow, if you started now, you could have a beard like that in 2042. And what about our beards? I don't know. I, you know I, I, mine, I just shaved off and letting it come back in. Yours still has pigment in it. So I'm jealous of the pigment thing, I got to tell you. Mine used to be black brown, but uh, something happened. I don't know what it was. But it took me a while to grow that one. I bet it did take it. Well, how long? How, when's the last time you were clean shaven, Pastor Tim? Oh, um, it's probably been twenty something years <laughs> so, uh, since I was clean shaven. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and, uh, I can now I've for kept that. it a lot shorter, <laughs> like maybe about half this for for a long time. But about seven or eight years ago, I decided to let it grow a little longer. So, and uh, you know, and so it's got to where it is now in seven or eight years. But it was half of this most of the time. I'll tell you this, I would trust you with my garden because you can grow stuff. Because uh, I don't think mine, I don't know if that mine would get that long or not. Tell me about the years. Yeah, that's the only thing I can think, Copper Owl, that would even possibly be causing some short term coin shortage. But uh, when it rolls over to half dollars, it, it, again, unless they're, they're setting them to the side and not sorting them. I don't know. I took uh, six uh, five-gallon buckets full of half dollars back today, uh, as well as dimes, nickels, and pennies. I froze up the coin counting machine, and it uh, took us a long time. But I'm taking chocolates to both banks tomorrow, so that's going to make them happy. So we'll see. Just found my first Tuskegee 2021 P. Congratulations, John Jacobs. Good deal. Vermont Redneck 83, hello, good to see you. Just starting my beard again in preparation for Christmas. Now that I'm retired, I do Santa every year for the community and now my YouTube channel. Very cool, the Nimbus Maniac. I've got something to add to that. Tell them about the time you bleached your beard. <laughs> you leased it? Bleached it. Bleached it. Yeah. Oh, I thought you leased it to somebody. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe it was a fill-in for Santa or something. My daughter is a uh, beautician and she... Uh, she said instead of wearing the the beard that comes in one of the suits, that she wanted to make my hair and my beard solid white. And <laughs> okay. it took her about six times of bleaching it to make it solid white, but my hair and my beard all was solid white. And I've got a Santa suit. And uh, so uh, then my wife and me started going around to her school. My wife's a teacher. And uh, so we started going to her school, or I did, and handing out candy canes, you know. And uh, so it kind of got started a few years ago doing that. Well, about three years ago, I guess it was or so, uh, they decided that uh, she needed to get a suit. So 
then we start going over there as Mr. and Mrs. Mr. Claus. And Mrs. Claus. Oh, and, uh, very cool. So uh, we did that for them and let the kids take pictures and everything. So we have fun doing that. And uh, cool. so, but I I learned a long time ago when you bleach it out like that. If you do it a bunch of times, you blister your face. I was going to say, and, was that pretty hard on your face? Uh, and uh, <laughs> Well, the first time or two wasn't bad, but when she did it three or four, then it literally uh, blistered my face. And uh, I said, we ain't doing that no more. We'll just <laughs> do the other. You have to find you some chemical burn. Oh, you have to find you some spray paint or something. <laughs> but, easier. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we just used the beard to come with the suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works a lot better. Numus Maniac says, good for you, Pastor Tim. Uh, you definitely got the beard for it. Paul spare time. My beard was almost as long as Pastor Tim's, but I shortened it about three inches a couple weeks ago. All right, Michael Fallis. Mine's never been quite that long. About, I don't know, six or eight weeks ago, you saw mine as long as it's uh, ever been. Mm -hmm. Adam Cole says, my brother's a beard guy. He had a pretty big one. I only have a chin goatee, which is what I like to have. My problem is I don't like mustache. Yeah, I used to have only the mustache, and then uh, got everyone saying creepy things about guys with just a mustache. So I, uh, we no, we had seriously, we had a policy at Walmart against beards. You could not have a beard. It was not a written policy. No one had told me this, and uh, I had been there a long time. And I decided one year to grow a beard for hunting season. And uh, so by November, I had a pretty good beard going, and. Uh, I was the vice president over electronics at the time at Walmart, and uh, I was in the executive meeting on a Saturday morning, a Friday morning, I'm sorry, and the uh, executive vice president of merchandising looked over at me, and I saw him shake his head and stand up, and he came over, walked over to me, and he said, Kirby, he said, uh, I'm going to be gone Monday and Tuesday of next week. It sure would be nice to see you clean shaven when I get back. <laughs> I think he might have said it sure will be nice to see you clean shaven when I get back. So the beard died that afternoon. And uh, then Walmart eventually loosened up the policies a little bit and I could grow my beard back. And was one of the few people with beards at, uh, at Walmart for a long, long time in the, uh, in the office. Uh, Bender Bending, I saw your, uh, oh, you got the camera working. Good, Bender Bending. I saw your com the car mini ingots. I love them. Good. Bender, I was looking at that complete set on eBay earlier today, and uh, they want a uh, large fortune for the complete 100 uh, ingot set of that. Uh, I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, so uh, you might have to save your pennies a while if you want to grow to the full 100 ingots of the old cars but I, I did think that was really cool i love looking at old cars and i'm glad the camera's working for you i hope the uh stand got there in one piece because i finally found a box that would fit in and that got there in record time i had a couple packages that i shipped on monday that already got to places uh yours to atlanta and uh I'm trying to think where the other one went i think it went to texas and uh people already got them today so that was like absolutely amazing all right what am i missing here best moment at walmart was seeing my former jump instructor as a walmart greeter made me feel that there's justice in the world now that's funny that's funny everything got here fine good everybody. i'm glad the yankees have i know they do they would, uh, Randy Johnson had to shave. You got something for me? You check out the mint mark on that one. All righty. You know, I went back in 1985, I guess it was, I was working in asbestos and uh, removing it, and we had to shave back then. Is it what? In so it's been at least that long. Repunch mint mark. Look at it on the closer one. Looking at a possible repunch mint mark. Whoa, it helped if I tighten my scope up so it didn't move when I <laughs> finally got it under the. Uh... Yep, it was a faker. I thought it was dark. I thought it might be. It's not an obvious one, but there's something to yeah. the south. Uh, it's worth hanging on to. Um, I would have to look at a variety of Vista on that one for me to uh, 
see what they're showing as the uh, the 73D repunchment marks. But there is there's something to the south, but I'm not seeing. I mean, it looks like a D over S, maybe, but I'm not sure. Come have check out. Huh? That would be a. Uh, so I'll let you hang on to it. That would be a strange uh, RPM, but uh, it's possible. Get you back to Pastor Tim. He's talking about the alligator. Uh, yeah, tell us your alligator story, Pastor Tim. They um, went on vacation with my wife, and we ran into a place that I wanted to go look at, uh, which was alligator farm, and I'd seen them talk about it on the uh, uh, swamp people. And uh, so I had uh, went down that way to look at that alligator farm and see if I could meet some of the people that's on the show. And we actually got to meet Mike and T. Mike uh, of the show of some of the first first seasons. And uh, they said I could come back during the season and hunt with uh, Mike. And uh, he would let me go out on the boat and uh, hunt for uh, alligators with them or with him, not on the show. He wasn't on the show at that time. But he let me do that, and I wound yeah, up killing five alligators, oh, and uh, could be, but two of them done. eleven footers, and I brought it home with me, uh, and we eat it, and also uh, I had the whole thing mounted, and uh, which cost me a, quite a bit, but that was okay. It was a hunt of a lifetime, and I really enjoyed it. And I so got, now, when you say mounted, you know, a lot of people would get an alligator, and maybe they just like do the head, right? Right. So, did you just do the head? Or? No, I mounted it 11 foot long. You mounted all 11 foot yeah, of your alligator. looks like he's crawling through my house. <laughs> <laughs> Weighs well, almost 100 pounds. Oh. <laughs> uh, the, mount, the mount's almost 100 pounds. Yeah. yeah. And the live alligator was probably... I think he said 750 pounds. Or something oh, like that. boy. And said it was about 50 years old, I think it was. And uh, so, it was an old one, and... Uh, and we got, uh, you know, five that day, but that was the biggest, best one, so I brought it home with me. So, so Pastor Tim and, and Jimmy went as his cameraman and filmed this because they used to have uh, a hunting channel that they did. And uh, so th that wasn't enough, though, for Pastor Tim. He had to remodel his house. You know, when you go mount an 11-foot alligator, <laughs> not just the head, but the whole 11-foot alligator, you have to remodel your house. Yep. And you have to put in, like, you know those shadow boxes that some of us get and we keep all our high school treasures in? Like our little medals and our, our letters from sports and stuff? Well, Pastor Tim put in a life-size shadow box window in his house with the 11-foot alligator in the shadow box window with kind of a mural behind it so it looks like it's 3D and alive. So you don't want to sneak up on I bet he doesn't have a single cat that comes onto his uh, porch. <laughs> yeah. So he got to hunt with a, uh, a Swamp People uh, TV star, a former TV star. I don't know if you're a former TV star or you're a permanent TV star. I don't know, but... Uh, and uh, take care of a lot of alligators and still has a memento from that hunt, which is pretty darn cool. Bender Bending says, I'm thinking of doing some retro game videos now that I have the camera. Very cool, Bender Bending. Now, how retro are you going? Are you going like original Madden? Are you going uh, original Mario Brothers? Are you doing uh, like... 8-bit? Uh, <laughs> yeah, are, you, are we talking uh, Atari? Uh, are you uh, talking your basic Nintendo? How, how far back are you going, Bender? Because those are the games I could play back when they only had a couple buttons. And the up, down, left, right. Two buttons, left, down, up, right, pause a hero. Yeah. The new games that Hudson has with like 64 buttons and buttons on the back and buttons on the bottom and buttons on the top. And the full keyboard. Yeah, and you can do the keyboard. Pause, no good. <laughs> no good. Hudson just, uh, we play a shooter game and I'm laying there dead and I don't know why. And uh, he's just laughing at me. Any guess in SNES? Boy, oh, now you're talking my language. I can play those, Bender Bending. I got one of the... Uh, 
uh, the smaller ones that they, the retro ones they brought out at Christmas a few years ago uh, that has all the old games on it. And I got uh, Hudson playing some of them and uh, we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. So you've got one person that'll watch. I'm there with you. All right, Numus Maniac, thanks for popping in. Good to see you. <laughs> have a good evening. Metal Dragon Braveheart, hello. You have your dress blues in a shadow box. Yeah, yeah, but and that's cool. But it probably doesn't scare the neighbor's cat, Metal Dragon. <laughs> Unless you've got maybe a, a sword with it or something. Um, I, I'm just guessing that Pastor Tim, like Halloween, can you imagine coming up at Pastor Tim's house <laughs> on Halloween? Your little six-year-old kid. You've got your uh, cowboy uh, outfit on. You got your cowboy hat. Your your little six shooters. You got your candy bag, and you're walking up on the porch to Pastor Tim's house. And you're getting closer and closer. And you just know. And I haven't heard this part of the story. You just know that this alligator has good lighting on it. I mean, you just know it does. You're walking up there, and all of a sudden, here's an alligator. Yeah. I mean, I the, six, the little kid six shooter is doing well, they, no they good. All, all 72. I have NES and SNES emulators on your computer. All right, you're more uh, technologically savvy than I am, Bender Bending. I've still got to do the little console and plug it into my TV to play. But I do have the wireless remote controls. The sword does. There you go, Metal Dragon. The sword probably does it. You and Pastor Tim should live next to each other. You would have no trick-or-treaters whatsoever. <laughs> no chance of your uh, yard or trees ever getting uh, toilet papered. You would be in great shape. Well, if you don't have no trick-or-treaters, you get to keep all the candy. That's true. That's <laughs> absolutely true. In case you need computer help. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, I know how to get a hold of you now. <laughs> Well, it looks like uh, the other Jimmy here is uh, very computer savvy. So if all of a sudden Paul gets more high tech. Now, I, I was hearing some stories, and I don't know if uh, how much of this is public knowledge or not, so I will keep it generic. But uh, the other Jimmy has helped out and provided uh, songs and uh, material for uh, other YouTube channels out there. So a shame. And so has Shannon. So that's pretty cool. Now, Shannon's actually my main competition. <laughs> oh, you and Shannon are in your competitors. So uh, I guess I get you two in a bidding war to, to help me out. You know, Paul has tried music on the channel twice. I have played the Hoot Nanny, and uh, no one's bothered me when I played the Hoot Nanny song. Uh, and then I played the Bonanza theme song. And uh, YouTube got all unhappy about me playing the Bonanza song. So I'm one for two and going to stop with a 500 batting average for right now. <laughs> Figure to quit while I'm ahead. Hello, legit sir noobs. Hello, Mrs. Chef Yoda. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for popping in. Plus, are you getting 2020 nickels or 2021? They're both selling at a premium on eBay and bankrolls. Treasure Hog, I'm getting, I'm getting both, but I'm getting 2021 D's, and I had them on uh, eBay, and I sold several boxes uh, for over $200 a box, but I'm seeing the box price now down around 150, and uh, with shipping and messing with it, I, uh, I have started. Uh, I still have them listed, but uh, I want, I'm not getting a lot of action on them. If you're interested in some 2021 D nickels treasure hog, I got five boxes of them today. Now I haven't I haven't checked them. I assume they're 2021 D nickels because all all the ones I've gotten recently, I've probably got ten boxes of 2021 D nickels right now, and I've got uh, I've got like four or five boxes of 2021 pennies. I can't sell them. Uh, and I haven't listed those, um, but. Uh, if you're interested, Treasure Hog, I've got a bunch. And if you're not interested, I'm going to take them back to the other bank. <laughs> so, 
So how many rolls do we have left? Let's see, 25, 31 it looks like. 32 counting the one in Pastor Tim's hand. And how much silver do we have so far, Pastor Tim? None. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm going to put a miscellaneous on the board for the 77 no F. It's not one we usually count, but the board is lonely. <laughs> the board is lonely, so we're putting up... It was a 77 no yes. F, wasn't it? All right, I thought it was. We're going to put that on the board as a miscellaneous, just so the board's not so lonely, because I feel bad for Pastor Tim. He's working so hard over there, and we're silverless, we're nipsyless. I mean, uh, I'm rooting for him, though. And these I are his boxes. boxes. And it's his <laughs> boxes are named after him. He drove 10 hours for them. I have three boxes of 21, 2021 D pennies I need to turn in. Yeah, I've got, I've got five or 10, Jim Cantor. Uh, and I haven't listed, I think I could probably sell some 2021 D pennies on eBay. I got four boxes of 21, 21 D dimes that I held on to for a few weeks, and I finally uh, turned those back in. I actually cracked all those open and dumped them in a box. So if anyone's interested in some 2021s, I'm getting a lot more than I want. I'll keep an eye on it and let you know before your next trip. Okay. Sounds good, Treasure. I'll... We could even do a consignment deal, Treasure Hog. <laughs> so uh, Pastor Tim and the other Jimmy can confirm. Does Paul have a pretty good stack of uh, nickels and pennies just inside the front door? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have a pickup truck load. <laughs> <laughs> and, and another pretty good stack here in the coin room also. Yeah. So, uh... That's I, why there's a coin shortage. <laughs> yeah. I've been there's accused... There's a coin shortage right here. I've been accused of causing part of the coin shortage. <laughs> um, but, uh... I'm in good shape. I, I'm probably around 60 boxes of nickels and pennies now. And it might be more than that. I, I'm not exactly sure. I, uh, I'm i going to have to move them because they're all stacked in one place. And I'm starting to worry about the floor joists a little bit. <laughs> it's not over where I watch TV or anything. But I think it's kind of over my son's bedroom. And that would probably be bad. Um, so we don't want that to happen. Welcome to Paul's Spare Bank. How many? We? <laughs> we got a find. <laughs> we got a find. Yeah, we got. We've got an NFC. Hey, hey, we've got an NIFC. 2005D. All right, I'll show everybody. Hey, that's a good sign. It's pretty, sir. It's better. It is pretty. 2005D. All right, NFC on the board. Well. Pastor Tim was wanting to get, uh, to complete his Nipsey collection. So one of the things we were doing before we started tonight was, uh, Paul has a few Nipseys. And uh, Pastor Tim was going through and uh, selecting some to complete his collection. I didn't even show you these, Pastor Tim, but I got a jar full of them over here, too. <laughs> and this one may be... Nope, that one's empty. We've got a few NIFCs here at the coin compound. Character Dragon, holy crud, I thought I was a penny order. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I can tell you five gallons pennies weighs 1,200 pounds. I can tell you that I can't lift them. I only put two boxes of half dollars in a uh, five gallon bucket now. Pennies, I can do three or four, uh, but I dumped a bunch of pennies today. I filled their, they don't usually, they told me, no no one fills our penny bags. Our mm -hmm. penny bags like never fill. So yeah, I got the distinction of filling the penny bag, the nickel bag, the half dollar bag I filled eight times. So uh, I don't know that I was feeling the love after the machine locked up today and they spent an hour with me at the bank. But uh, I'm taking them chocolate tomorrow, so it'll all be good. Anyone that came in late, you do notice a couple of guest faces in the uh, stream. And uh, we have Pastor Tim in the light blue shirt. And we have the other Jimmy in the not light blue shirt. And they are uh, brother-in-laws. They are both uh, subscribers to our channel. They're frequently in, our, uh, in the chat. 
And uh, Pastor Tim had been building up uh, a pretty good supply here of gall wins and uh, donation prizes. And he'd been telling me he was going to come over and get them. And uh, he, uh, he and Jimmy took off this morning at like 6 a.m. and had a 10-hour drive from uh, an unknown location in Tennessee all the way over to Northwest Arkansas. Now, in fairness, they did stop and see another friend in Arkansas. And uh, so this wasn't the sole purpose of the trip. But, uh, you know, when Paul gets some extra help here, we've uh, we put him to work. Pastor Tim is searching his own mulligan box, which has never happened before, so Paul can take no blame. All I did was go to the bank, drag the coins back, which... Uh, these two did conveniently get here late enough to not help with any of the coin moving today. Even though I took coins up the stairs and I took coins down the stairs, was there anybody around when Paul was doing that? No. These guys are smart. Don't let that Tennessee accent fool anybody. These guys are smart. They know how to time it. They got here right when the cookies came out of the oven. Now that's good timing, I'm telling you. Y'all need to bid more on them Grammy cookies because they're great. There you go. Those Grammy cookies are pretty solid. Hudson and I are always glad to see those come in. Especially after we've been doing this for about four hours and we're starving and here comes the cookies. Ah, oh, that's a good thing. Muss up the possum, good to see you. And he says, hello everyone. Jimmy and Pastor Tim. Hello. Paul. Hello. Metal Dragon says, I have probably weighed 1,083s. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, Metal Dragon. That's uh, like me and uh, 72 no FGs. Um, I found a couple 72 no FGs, but I've looked at a million. I know I have. I just know I have. It gets almost. But uh, to the one, the uh, the speared buffalo, I have been looking for a speared buffalo nickel since we started searching nickels, the Kansas nickel, and the speared bison, and I don't know how many of those things I've looked at, but it's a gazillion, and I have never found a speared buffalo. Have, have you guys ever found a speared buffalo or speared have, bison? Have I found a speared one. I did find a double hunt. Oh, a double hump, okay. In Kansas. Yep, I've looked for those as well and not found one of those either. Jim Cantor says, which Arkansas team do you watch? One of them is a Seattle Mariners minor league team. Um, Jim Cantor, right here in uh, Springdale, Arkansas, which is about 15, 20 miles south of us, is the home of the Northwest Arkansas Naturals. And they are the double A team for the Kansas City Royals. And David Glass, who used to be the CEO of Walmart, uh, owned the Kansas City Royals up until almost the time of his death, uh, I think That's last year, or the year before. And uh, so we happened to get a, 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 a double-A uh, minor league baseball team here. So we have had season tickets for the last several years, and uh, grandsons Hudson and Rhett love to go. And... Uh, our first tickets, uh, we've got tickets on fireworks nights, uh, and that's every Friday night, but we've got tickets for Friday and Saturday this week, being the first week they're at home. So Paul and Grammy and Hudson and Rhett are going to the Naturals Friday and Saturday night. There will be many a snack eaten, um, and uh, we uh, before they put the safety net up, our seats are right on the dugout. So we're, we're right there in the front row by the dugout and used to, we got to know the catcher really good because we had, we had tickets for every game. And uh, at the, when a strikeout would end the inning, the catcher would always come over and throw the ball to Hudson. So Hudson used to get a ton of balls from the ballpark. But now they put the, uh, the safety netting up and uh, we don't get as many as we used to. But Hudson and I will go to batting practice, and we will chase home run. Well, okay. In fairness, Hudson will chase home run balls. Paul will tell Hudson where to run um, because Paul's not doing a lot of chasing these days. But uh, we love to watch the Naturals, and they put on a great fireworks show on their fireworks nights. It is uh, 
usually a 10 to 15 minute show that's like you know any city show well any smaller city show on a uh, fourth of july so the kids love the fireworks so does paul so does grammy No, I don't have an eye for varieties like some people do, Sandy H. says. Sandy, is that an eye for finding them or an eye for liking them? Because it took me a long time to figure out how to look for them and find them. Because I would watch people and see what they're looking at, and I couldn't figure it out. And I finally came up with my own way of finding 73 and 74 DDDOs, and I can see them now. Crafty Dragon says that Spirit Bison does not exist. That's the figment of some Crafty Dragon. I think you're right. I would agree with that. If they're just trying to exercise my thumbs looking for those silly things. Metal Dragon says, Paul, I want a mint roll of 09 Bison from JB Coins and got two Spirit Bisons. Wow. Metal Dragon, congratulations. That is awesome. How lucky. Wow. Congrats for that. So they do exist, you're saying. Now, now we've got a conflict here. We've got conflicting information on whether they exist or not. I guess if you've seen one, it could exist. Cool, I hope you have great weather for the games. Friday night's supposed to be awesome. They're talking rain on Saturday. We've had so much stinking rain here. How about down in Tennessee? Have you guys been getting all this rain we're sending over your yep. way? Yeah, every bit of it. Yeah. <laughs> How about the storms? Did you dodge tornadoes and hail? Uh, and dodge tornadoes, got a little bit of hail. Yeah. Not much. It's all missed us by a little bit, but uh, I'm about tired of this. I, I want some cool spring weather. Stan Horn says, I have not found the recognized speared buffalo, but did find one that is speared through the rump. <laughs> that was a bad shot, Stan. <laughs> I've not heard of that one. You may have discovered a new variety, Stan. I have not seen the Speared Hump Buffalo. You might want to have Wexler or somebody check that one out. Avercurt's in the house. Good to see you, Avercurt. In my mind, the Speared is a 2000, in, uh, 2005, but I could be wrong. And I for finding them, any, DDO, DDRs, missing leaves, extra horns, accents, the whole gamut. Sandy H, uh, let me do this. I am going to put up a link for you, Sandy H, that is a video that I did uh, a, probably a year ago. And I promise you, if you watch this video, I show you a very easy way to look for and find 1973 D DDOs and 1974 D DDOs in half dollars. If you're interested, that link is uh, right there from uh, Streamlabs and uh, several people have watched it and said that it would really help them in uh, looking for 73 and 74 D DDOs. All right, Sandy H, thanks. So, Avrakurt, if you're wondering who the uh, two additional faces are in the stream tonight and you don't know, uh, Pastor Tim is in the light blue shirt doing the searching. He is searching his own mulligan box. I'm like, yep, I'll give you a mulligan box, Pastor Tim, but you've got to drive 10 hours from Tennessee to search it yourself. <laughs> No, it's not exactly what happened. And sitting next to him in the purple shirt is the other Jimmy. They're both subscribers of the channel and frequently in the chat. And Pastor Tim had been accumulating some wins and some donation uh, prizes here. And had been saying he was going to come over like a 10-hour drive, just like running down the road. And uh, <laughs> so today they did. And uh, so they got here close to stream time, so uh, Paul put them to work. And uh, Pastor Tim is searching his own mulligan box. And the other Jimmy is going to hunt the next box for Stan Horn, if Stan is still here, for Stan's mulligan box. At least that's our plan. Unless they figure out I'm working them hard. <laughs> then they may go hit the cookies again. I, I don't know. They're so, awful good. Yeah, they are good. So, I will <laughs> show you all something I got in today and I think it's going to show up flipped. 
But coming soon to an auction near you, just released colorized peanuts rounds. Paul bought a bunch. I bought a bunch. That one's Charlie Brown. That one is Charlie Brown happy birthday to give to people on their birthday. <laughs> Are there There's any, a bunch of them in a row right there. Any Linus fans out there? Linus with his blankie. Yeah. How about Sister Sally? We've got Sister Sally. Oh yes, we couldn't have a set without the protagonist. It's Lucy. If she would just stop moving that darn football while Chuck's trying to kick it. We got Lucy. And of course, we've got to have some more Snoopy. We've got Party Snoopy. And we have Graduation Snoopy. So, and Woodstock. You know, Snoopy and Woodstock, they hang together. Graduation date's getting close. The graduation's uh, coming around, so if you need a graduation gift for somebody, I can't think of a better thing than a, uh, a graduation Snoopy. I don't have a microscope yet. Need to get a laptop first. That's probably the best, Crafty Dragon. But you're going to want a digital microscope. Mrs. Coin Crew bought one of those, Paul. Very cool. Well, Paul, the uh, Atmex has an exclusive on the uh, Peanuts rounds, and uh, the colorized ones are, all, they, they only release these in colorized, except Paul may have bought, I may have bought an entire roll of the, uh, I don't know if you can see that. it's just the silver Charlie Brown. One of the because I like me my Charlie Brown. Uh, but they're, uh, it's a very limited run. They're only releasing them in colorized. So, uh, Paul bought five of everything, plus 20 of the uh, Charlie Brown. Bender Bending wants one of each. All right. Send me an email, Bender Bending. The goal we've talked about is underway and in motion. Ooh, what are we? Uh, what are we going, Dark Silver Seth? Oh, really? Really? The one you and I've been talking about for over a year. Because if we're going to do that, we have to figure out, Dark Silver Seth, if I'm going to uh, drag boxes uh, back uh, down to uh, Rob again, or what we're going to do. Check out the song, Charlie Brown, by Widespread Panic. I will write that down, Can Can, and I will check it out. I won't do it live because I'm, at, I'm batting 500, and I don't want to get in trouble again. Got to be a good Paul. Got to be a good Paul. I keep forgetting to look at the mint mark. <laughs> Widespread Panic. I will listen to it. I have a service announcement. All right, service announcement coming. Mm -hmm. Please don't mark your coins. <laughs> this has been uh, a service announcement. Yeah, Paul would prefer no one marked their coins or punched holes in them too. We've only got so many of those uh, half dollars left. We got to make them last. We want them pretty. It's I two ounces. They have four holes. <laughs> New 3D Dragon 3D coin. Cool. How many holes? Four. Four? Yeah, I don't know why they did that. Somebody was bored, huh? I reckon. Crafty Dragon wants any dragon coin he can get. Well, I've got a woolly mammoth. I don't think I have any dragon coins right now. Not at least that I want to uh, share with anybody. Well, my coin's dragon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> We're the silver's dragging here. We're not pulling any silver out of this box yet. We're trying, though. 
We are trying. K Titus, good to see you. Welcome from Japan. Welcome in. Yeah, I'm aiming for early July. All right, I will, Dar Silversmith. I'm going to be seeing him in late June. That is cool, Dar Silversmith. I'm glad you're able to do that now. That, uh, I will tell that story here in a second. I think a lot of people know it. Um, Pawn Hudson had uh, just just C Brown. Paul, hope you like it. All right, I will check it out. Call on that one. Mint Mark. All right, I got a coin to check. The other Jimmy says, Paul, you got to do something. You can't just sit there and tell <laughs> stories. You're gonna have to occasionally look at. Yeah, that's to the south. I don't know what it is. But notice the in the center here. Yeah. Is, what year is that? It's 83. That is an 83 repunch mint mark, it looks like. Let's see if I can check out Variety Vista real quick and see if it's one we can identify on there. Because Paul is not super familiar with all of the uh, RPMs. And uh, they don't they don't recognize an 83. But I'm going to tell you that that's... Uh, that looks like a repunch mint mark to me. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not damage. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's a D over D or what it is. It's like a D over a backwards S. But I'm definitely going to say that I think you've got a repunch mint mark there. All right. Recognized or not by Variety Vista. What all varieties are the other Jimmy looking for? I will let the other Jimmy tell you what all varieties he is looking for. Because he's looking for a lot mm -hmm. that aren't necessarily recognized by PCGS or NGC or maybe even Variety Vista. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. There are a lot of varieties out there that aren't recognized uh, for extra value that are still different enough that they're a coin you would want in your collection. Exactly. So. Jimmy, why don't you tell them? That's a book filler. That's pretty, that's pretty 72. I'll have to check that in one second. What we're looking for, well, in our area, these are the ones that are most prominent. We've got a 71D as a DDO, a 72 no mint mark as a DDO, the 72D has a no FG, the 73D has a DDO and a repunch mint mark. Could be either or could be both on that one. Uh, 74D uh, has a DDO. The 77D has a DDO possible and a no F. That, that no F is actually a strike through grease. So you can see a slight F on it, but if it's mostly gone, they still count it. So that would be similar to the uh 72 that we look for the 72d and the 82p no fg on the on the reverse but in this case it's just the f that is missing right now the 83p no fg that was actually an element that was left off the die so you will have nothing there just a blank fill and if you have anything that shows up they don't count it's not it so uh, there's also an 82P that has a no FG, a 79P that has a no FG, an 89D, which is another RPM, but the 89 is actually a rare coin to find for some reason. So you, you might get one or two in a whole yeah, box. Don't see a lot of 89s. And then there's a 94D DDO. Now all of these varieties I have found and I have confirmed them with my local coin store and you know they credited them in fact he's actually bought a couple of them from me that's very cool so a lot of times you all would just see uh paul and hudson on here and trying to you know rip through six boxes in a night and get done within six or seven hours and we just don't have time to look for everything 
You know, if you, you're going to search pennies on your own or half dollars on your own, nickels on your own, man, there's a ton of stuff you can look for. There are a lot of good sites out there that will give you information on them. Uh, Wexler's is a very good site, uh, which I think it's doubledie.com is the, uh, the address for Wexler's. Varietyvista.com is another good one that can help you out. And then sometimes you might find something that's uh, never been found before uh, because it happens. It happens every year. One good thing to look for are die cracks because these dies crack because they used them and used them and used them and used them. So I found a, a ton of die cracks and a lot of people actually want those. Yeah. Metal Dragon Braveheart, you're right. Uh, that is how uh, PCGS graders and NGC graders will count and no FG is they use five times zoom on a loop and if they can't uh, see the FG through the loop at uh, 5x magnification it uh, gets the uh, the distinction of being an OFG on my uh, digital microscope I am up somewhere between 50 and 75 times magnification um, so Sometimes I will see a faint F or a faint G, uh, whereas uh, they, uh, they would have a five times magnification and it would get the designation to be an OFG coin. Paul, find a 68S Lincoln no FG buy a new car. I'll mm -hmm. get right on that. I tell you what, uh, Metal Dragon, um, they weren't no FGs, but can can opened his mom and pop penny box half the rolls on monday night and can can found two or three 68s blazers that were absolutely gorgeous i can can those might have been the prettiest coins that you found during that hunt were those 68s's they were they were perfect you did have some nice 55s and 58s also but that 68s Two of them, at least, were just perfect. But if you... I may have my list written out here. Who was it, Paul, that um, found that um, 44 steel? Uh, uh, whatever happened about it? Jim Cantor found that. And uh, Jim Cantor, are you, in, uh, are you still in the stream? I know Jim just got out of the hospital, so he may be uh, doing the uh, pain relief. Uh, but Jim Cantor is the one that found it, and I'll let him tell the story. Oh, yes, Treasure Hog sent me pictures, and I can show those here in a minute. Um, I, uh, Treasure Hog, you never did send the BIE Blazer to my computer, or never got it. I just got it as a text. So would you try to could you try to send that to me again on my computer, Treasure Hog? And if you will, I will show that BIE Blazer on a uh, penny because it is awesome. Jim Cantor, um, Pastor Tim, and the other Jimmy were just asking about uh, your uh, 1944 Steely that you found, and I don't know if you would uh, like to share the outcome of that with everybody or not. And you certainly don't have to give specifics, uh, but uh, it's your story to tell, Jim Cantor. Unless you have a file. Yeah. Plus, for time, this golf theme is air and varieties, and it's going to be amazing. Teacher and possibly one more is collabing on it as well to juice it up some more. Very cool, Dark Silversith. And I will, I'll get back to the Dark Silversith story here in a minute. Don't let me forget. Four 1968s ball, just stunning. They, I, they, I know, I, I saw at least two of them can can, and they were just beautiful. Yeah, absolutely they beautiful. Yep. Uh, Paul and Hudson had uh, not been collecting oh, or searching coins very long, and uh, we were inspired by Rob Fine's treasure as well as JB Coins. Uh, mm -hmm. Rob for the live streams and the videos, JB Coins for the informational videos we really liked. And uh, 
Jim Cantor says, it hasn't been completely confirmed, but I sold it for over $50,000, wow. which paid almost half of my medical bills. Jim Cantor, that is awesome, and I am so happy for you. Yeah. That is a good find. I, now, I want one or two of those. Yeah. <laughs> but congratulations to you, Jim Cantor, and thank you for sharing that story. Um, so, we... Uh, we watched Rob Fine's Treasure um, live streams fairly religiously. Still do to a certain extent. Um, I just got to watch myself so I don't spend too much in the auctions. Um, <laughs> because those get uh, pricey. But uh, mm. Rob, in one of his streams, um, he... Uh, he opened all the boxes that he had in his possession and he'd been having trouble with the, the banks closing and people were having some uh, some uh, trouble getting coins and uh, it was I guess his Wednesday stream that that happened and Thursday was our pickup day and uh, I didn't know if we would get our coins or not but uh, we actually got our 10 boxes of half dollars that week. And uh, I knew Rob didn't know for sure if he was going to get his or not. And uh, he had a big event planned with Darth Silversith, where Darth Silversith was uh, getting a, uh, was giving away a bunch of gold. It was Darth Silversith night, and he was giving away a bunch of gold, and it was amazing gauze that night. So it was a super major event that was planned. And uh, so I talked to Hudson and Red at the time. I tried to eat, okay, I'll check at Treasure Hog. Um, and uh, I said, you know, here's the deal. Rob's got this special event planned and he may not have any boxes for Friday night. So what do you guys, what, do you, what would you guys think about, because uh, I happened to pick them up from school that day. What would you think if we uh, offered our boxes to Rob Fine's Treasure and see if he wants to uh, buy them off of us at face value? And Rob lives uh, five or six hours away from us, but I, uh, and I didn't know Rob at all. And uh, I came home and sent Rob an email. I said, hey, you don't know me, but this is who we are. This is what we do. Uh, we're worried about you not having boxes for this uh, Friday night. I just picked up, we got our 10, we're willing to uh, sell those to you if you want, uh, even willing to drive them down to you because there's not time to ship them at this point, or we could meet you halfway. If you're interested, we'd be willing to do this. Uh, Rob got the email and, and sent me an email back and said, yes, I, I'm interested, let me talk to Charlani. And so Rob and Charlani are kind of thinking this through like, uh, okay, this why does somebody we do not know Offer to uh, drive me uh, half dollars down mm -hmm. and meet me in a Walmart parking lot in the middle of Oklahoma. This, this, what do we do? So Rob looked up our videos and watched them and uh, sent me a note back and said, yeah, we're on. Uh, we can leave in like an hour. So I called uh, Hudson and Rhett's mom and said, we're driving to Oklahoma. We're going uh, three hours, three and a half hours away to take some uh, coins to Rob Fine's treasure. And uh, she's like, okay. And I'm like, we'll be back midnight or so. So we took off and uh, we, uh, we drove to Oklahoma. Rob and Charlani uh, met us halfway. We both drove about three, three, and a half, three hours, I guess. We met them in a Walmart parking lot. It was in the height of COVID and uh, we were wearing our masks and uh, we had to bump fists and say hi and uh, we couldn't go have a celebration beverage or lunch or anything because the restaurants weren't even open so we made a transaction in the walmart parking lot and rob took our 10 boxes and went home and uh, we turned around and went home and we watched on friday night and as it turned out rob wasn't even sure he wasn't going to be able to get boxes but when he went to get his boxes on uh, friday the uh, the bank did not have any of his boxes. So he wouldn't have had any boxes at all for Dar Silversith night, this big event that was planned. And uh, so 
he uh, started the stream, and we didn't know what was going to happen, but he had all the boxes numbered ARK 1 through 10, and he had the stream doing our boxes and was able to go ahead with the awesome giveaways that Darth Silverseth had. And I was nervous as heck that he was opening our boxes and they were going to be uh, kind of skunky like the one Pastor Tim's working on right now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, about, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 rolls into box one, he found a silver and then he found more silver and then he found more silver. And then he opened up a roll that had a Walking Liberty in it and a later box. Hudson was so happy until he saw the Walking Liberty because Hudson had never found one at that point. And we'd given away the box that had one in it. Uh, but it turned out to be an unbelievable stream with this gold giveaway. And with uh, ended up finding over 20-some silvers that night. And I think it was the first time and only time that Rob had ever had a 1,000 people watching live at one time. And the first time he had had over 1,200 likes in a stream. Uh, it was fabulous fun. Uh, the giveaways, the gold giveaways at the end by Darth Silversith were so, so generous. And it was just an amazing stream. And we got to be a part of that. And Rob helped us by shouting out our channel. And we gained a lot of subscribers at that time. And kind of really got us thinking about, you know, maybe we can get to a 1,000 and, uh, you know, do something someday. And uh, it was an amazing thing to be a part of. And Darth Silversith is the one that... Uh, had uh, donated all the stuff. Yeah, and there was a bunch of foreign coins too. The foreign silver, that's right. I remember that now, there's foreign silver. Um, so it uh, it ended up being really cool. And uh, we got to know Robin Charlotte from that. We have taken them rolls uh, since then that they've opened and found silver. So pretty cool thing. Yeah, I think it was the first time, first time you, I don't know what the number ended up being, you're probably right, but it was the first time you'd had over uh, 1,100 uh, watching uh, at the very same time and over uh, uh, 1,200 likes. Adam Cole says, that's how I found out about Paul. <laughs> uh, thank you, Adam. Averkirk says, that's when I subscribed. Thank you. So uh, a lot of you have been with us since then, so that was a... That was a very, very cool night. Hudson did die just a little bit when the Walking Liberty was found. But what am I looking here for, Jimmy? You've handed me a uh, coin. 77 no F. 77 no F. All right. Yep. You got the very light F again. It is a 77 no F. Congratulations. Okay. You want that one flipped too? We can flip her up. Now you're handing me something else. You're gonna. This you're like really making me work now. It's a 72 D no F G. Oh, that would be amazing. I'd like a second opinion. That would be amazing. Let's take a look. A possible 72 D no F G. I see it under magnification. You got the G here, and you got part of the F there. Um, I would say that one's prominent enough that I would not count it. Okay. That's what I would say on that one. Uh, if if it was a little bit less, especially on the G, that G's pretty prominent, and it is under a lot of magnification. But I would you, you can hang on to it, certainly. But I would say that probably would not get the designation. Yeah, you take it. But Paul's not a grader. <laughs> I am not an expert. I'm just going on. I the don't ask you to grade. I ask for your opinion. <laughs> that, that, that's all I can give you. That's my opinion. Hudson's the one with the eagle eyes. That uh, he. Uh, I wish I had his vision. I don't think I ever had vision that good. I'm just not at his speed right now. <laughs> <laughs> when we go deer hunting, he is my. Uh, he is my eyes. You see them before they, you do? Oh, yeah. A lot farther out than I do. Well, I want his ears then. <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't have insomnia, I wouldn't have found Paul. All right, mm -hmm. Metal Dragon. Hey, a lot of people, I will tell you, 
it's uh, it's almost uncanny. And there are 38 people watching us tonight, almost at midnight. But uh, we we gain four or five subscribers a week through Coinsomniacs of uh, people finding us. And a, a lot of our friends out there have, will send us uh, and do raids on uh, our Coinsomniacs nights because we're the last men standing. And uh, a lot of people have found us through Coinsomniacs. So uh, it's kind of a good thing for those of us that can't, uh, can't sleep. Now, about halfway home tomorrow, Pastor Tim and the other Jimmy are going to be going, uh, you know, the first 10 hours of this drive wasn't too bad. <laughs> but this second 10 hours... Crafty Dragon, I don't get to pause streams as much as I'd like to. Well, uh, Crafty, I hope you can pop in more. I know this is a tough time slot. And on Saturday night, there's a lot of people streaming when we do our half dollar boxes. And on Sunday mornings, a lot of people are in church. There are eight boxes left, Stan. Or eight boxes. Eight rolls left, Stan. Eight rolls left, Stan. And you've got the next box if you want it. Still hoping to pop a silver. We're hoping. I don't want to have to get my skunk silver over here. I I hate to reveal the location of my skunk silver. Turn my go outside. You have to turn your back and close your eyes. And there you go. My late night stream, Night Owls, might be uh, making a comeback this Sunday. I need to travel to work, but I don't want to miss two weeks in a row. There you go, Copper Owl Coins. Copper Owl does do some late night streaming as well. You gotta check out Copper Owl Coins. He's got a fun channel to watch. Plus, for time, you don't see the deer because you're asleep. That's why you don't see them. <laughs> no, Joe Layton. That, uh, when I'm deer hunting, man, I'm awake. If I'm going to drag my tail out of bed at 4.30 a.m. to go deer hunting on opening morning, I ain't sleeping. I will tell you that the last time I took Hudson and we sat there for three hours and didn't see anything, I might have had to wake him up. Now, it wasn't because we saw a deer, because... Uh, that was not the case, but I might have had to wake Hudson up from a little bit of a nap. I can vouch you got a few deers. That's pretty <laughs> nice. So you did stay awake for some of them. <laughs> yeah. These, these gentlemen have seen uh, the uh, the collection on the wall, my elk and uh, our white-tailed deer. You've got a bear right there next to you. It's not very big. I don't even know if you noticed that, Pastor Tim. No. You're right next to oh, the bear. Okay. Yeah. He's not very big. That's my Canada bear. Mm -hmm. I was scared to death to be bear hunting, so the first one that walked up, I shot. <laughs> the guy said, you couldn't wait? I'm like, heck, wait. I thought he might climb my tree. <laughs> had to do what I had to do. There you go. You never know. I found that walker with just three rolls left. That's true. <laughs> this is the kind of box you just uh, you get over there. And, uh, you know, with five rolls left a couple weeks ago, the uh, you saved the stream. You saved the stream, Adam, and then three rolls later, you filled the board. So those last five rolls can be highly <coughs> productive. You just occasionally like it like it was this last Saturday where we found silver in the very first roll of the night. That does not happen often enough. That's just unbelievable, Metal Dragon. That's good for him. He's getting boxes in a better place than I am, or he's luckier than I am. He ought to be buying lottery tickets. If he got a stream of 250 boxes in a row of uh, silver, that's just amazing. Wow. Um, JB Coins. Paul Spare Time, deer? I have up to 15 deer coming in my backyard on a nightly basis during the winter. I like to feed them grains and carrots and apples. They love me. Well, that is very cool, Miss Chef Yoda. It seems like I can see, a, like uh, two nights ago, uh, well, Sunday night, after I took uh, Hudson home, I had seven deer jump out in the middle of the road and try to attack my truck. So I had to uh, stop very quickly. And uh, yet when it comes opening morning and you go climb in the perfect stand, when it's still dark and you're sitting there, all those deer you've been seeing, they're smart. They're like, uh, nope, we're out of here. It's a lot harder. He 
You can't hunt and talk at the same time. He talks with his hands. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I had to. I took Hudson deer hunting for the first time ever when he was four years old, and we worked for uh, three months on whispering. <laughs> and uh, he did pretty good. That's nice, Metal Dragon, to get a place like that. I've got a nice place to go that my uh, best friend has partial ownership in. But, uh, and I've hunted some places down in Texas that are like that that just appear everywhere. Sometimes when I don't see them, I just whistle and they bolt over. You've got trained deer, Mrs. Chef Yoda. <laughs> You've got them trained. Dark Silver says, I've gone through five of six boxes for this week. Proof is holding me back from a fill the board. Pulled 240s and 290s, including a 36D Walker. Congratulations. Very awesome. We're wanting that for Pastor Tim here. All he's done so far is exercise his thumb, so we've worked him hard. He's got six rows left. We want to pop a silver. We want to do the silver dance. We want to do the silver dance. Pastor Tim, eight boxes. Uh, not cooperated. We've got what one NIFC and a couple. I don't know if I put that other uh, no F up here. I did not. But it's your box, and we will go by your scoring system tonight. Paul usually doesn't have time to look for those no Fs, but <laughs> tonight Paul's just yeah. talking. We got extra people. You got yeah. extra people. It's great. Watch the deer video on my stream. All right, Metal Dragon, I will write that down and I will check it out. I will check it out. Your dogs have made friends of the deer, Joe Layton. That is cool. Our little Shih Tzus would just chase them and have no earthly idea what they would do if they caught them. <laughs> I traded 76 2020Ws. I found hunting and traded them for a PCGS Mint State 62 1921 piece dollar. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, they do eat your garden. There's some stuff you can put on it that supposedly stops them, but I'm not sure. You want to know the cheapest thing? Hair? Hair. Yeah. Go to your I, hair salon, you get all their clippings. Yeah, I have heard that, that if you put human hair out in your garden or on your plants, that the deer will leave them alone. Evercourt has 9 to 12 that come to our feeder in the backyard. Eight of our neighbors have feeders too, so they have a smorgasbord to choose from. I do have a couple feeders set up here in northwest Arkansas in a place that we uh, bow hunt. And I think that's pretty much all I've accomplished is feeding the deer. I do get very nice pictures of them eating our corn. And they <laughs> seem to like it a lot. But... Uh, Got another niche. Hey, hey! Finally, second NIFC. Been still going. Two thousand two. That's our second. That is our second. Here, I'll have to try that. Yep, it's also in the movie with uh, Dennis Quaid where he is a baseball pitcher. He's a uh, high school coach. Makes a bet with his team. If they win district, he'll try out for baseball again and uh, makes a comeback as a baseball pitcher at age 38, throwing 100 miles an hour. I can't remember the name of the movie, but the deer kept eating their uh, grass on their baseball field. So they put hair on the baseball field in that movie and uh, grew their grass. So they would have a grass infield. It's not rookie of the year. I could Google fi it because I am sitting here with not a lot to do. You don't hold any value to damage coins, do you? Uh, no, I don't. Even though this might be a lamination error. Oh, if it's a lamination error, yes. 
Kind of hard to tell on those, but yeah. we'll look at it here in a second. Well, this, it was probably a bubble at one. <laughs> one time. The rookie. The rookie. So whoever said rookie of the year, Darth Silver says, you were partially right. Rookie of the year is the movie about the kid that breaks his arm and ends up uh, being able to throw 100 miles an hour and becomes a pitcher for the Chicago Cubs. But this is called The Rookie. Very good movie if you like baseball, and it's a true story. Paul, when I was in school, we had a girl who talked with her hands. She would wave them all about. One day, my brother grabbed her arms and held them at her sides, and she couldn't say a word. <laughs> she went mute, huh? She went mute. Yeah, you came closer than me, Darth Silver said. I didn't even get that part. Ah, uh, The Natural, one of my favorite movies, definitely. Robert Redford. Fun movie to watch. Of course, I love baseball, so. We're down to three rows. Three rolls left for Pastor Tim. Jim Cantor, I was going through the last rolls of Bankrupt Box I got before going to the hospital and just found a 1941 DDO FS 101. Never looked for those until I saw RFT's video on the ones he found. Very cool, Jim Cantor. I'm glad to see Rob doing uh, some educational stuff. I think uh, those will do very well, and we will all learn from them. That is great. Yeah, Field of Dreams. I happened to catch Field of Dreams on uh, TV one night. I wasn't streaming at 3 a.m., and I watched it, and uh, the commercials were killing me, so I went over and found it on Netflix or Amazon Prime and watched it without commercials. Two rolls left. Can we have some last late roll magic here, Pastor Tim? I hope. That's a long <laughs> way to drive for a couple nifties, man. I mean, <laughs> something silver. Real quick. Silver. I got a That's silver. <laughs> I'm going to bless that last roll with an ATB. Oh, thank you, Treasure Hog. Let's see if Treasure Hog's email came through on his. Uh, Explosion. Yep. Yeah. Might be something in there, huh? Sometimes the roll just can't contain it. All right, I've got it, Treasure Hog. Let's see if I can download it here. Yeah. There it is. This is the... Uh, that's not it. That's it. This is the Blazer Air Penny that uh, Treasure Hog found. Look at that. Wow. Very prominent. L I B I E R T Y. And even a little extra other than just the I. Very nice. And he found another one uh, that wasn't, wasn't a Blazer, wasn't quite that nice. He found two of these, but that one is a beauty. And it was flipped, so that means I handled it and flipped it for him, and I didn't see that. Bad paw. Uh, last roll for Pastor Tim. Last roll. Congratulations. Roll. Yeah, congratulations on that coin, Treasure Hog. That is awesome. Thanks for reminding me. They're supposed to be playing an ML game. I heard that, Jay Money. I heard they were going to play a real game there. That would be cool. I will definitely watch that. Kevin Costner tried to open up a convention center here in Deadwood and then expected the people to pay for it. They told him heck no, so he didn't get his convention center built. All right. That's a nice penny. I found a Roosevelt with a booger. Think it's worth anything? No, and I hope you were wearing gloves. 
Yeah, Treasure Hoax coins came out of a mom and pop penny box. Very nice varieties. Errors, actually, not varieties. Pastor Tim is not jumping up and down in a manner that would indicate to me that he has located silver in this last round. I ain't seen that. Hmm. Darn it. Isn't that a beauty can can? Very nice. So you all kind of get a feeling what it's like for Paul to sit here for six hours and talk to himself now, right? <laughs> it's, it's actually nice to have uh, other live people in the room in the middle of the night. I'll take a break and go to the bathroom and come back, and it's like, where is everyone? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Plus, for time, not a real one, but not sure what they call it. Oh, slag? Uh, could be a die chip. Um, probably. I'm still learning too, Mrs. Chef Yoda, but it is possible. Uh, what you might want to do is look on uh, VarietyVista.com and go in under Dimes and then click on the year and the mint mark and see if it's one that uh, they recognize and they'll probably tell you what it is. Time for a two-sided coin flip. I think you're right, Jim Cantor. Is that it? <laughs> That's it. Did you finish that box? Well... Dead gum, I have to write it down. Where's my pen? PT8 had two NIFCs and two miscellaneous no Fs, otherwise known as a silver skunk box. So, Pastor Tim, you know what we do when people are skunked twice? Well, I used to do a coin flip, but I have changed, and I decided that I want everyone to win. So, you get a choice of 90 percenters. You could pick any 90 percenter that I possess, which is a Barber, a Walker, a Kennedy, or a Benji. Barber. A Barber. All right. A Barber. I just filled these. Here's what I'm going to do. No one else gets to do this. That one even open? You could even pick your own. Pastor Tim is going to pick between 20 barbers that are in a, uh, a coin tube, and that is going to be his skunk silver. And Pastor Tim, I appreciate you donating and making uh, and supporting our channel, and I appreciate you all uh, driving all the way over here today to pick up your stuff. That's, that's a tough way for me to save shipping, but uh, it works for me, and I can take the uh, the night off. Well, we enjoy driving out here. We enjoy uh, making it. Uh, I'm glad that you guys drove over, and I'm glad you had a good trip. I'm just uh, going to feel for you on your trip home. Yeah, we'll get there one up to sleep, and the other one will drive. That's a good trade-off. <laughs> I am going to let you package up your finds in uh, the envelope, in the manila envelopes, all these that you want to keep if you want, and uh, we'll put let them, him do it. I'll let him do it. Okay, you guys are going to switch positions, that's they're, right. They're all right, what did you pick? We'll show it off here. 1900, I think. 1900, let's see. This is the barber that Pastor Tim has selected for his skunk silver. He's got a 1900. Barber, half dollar. I uh, don't see a mint mark, so that would be a P. Congratulations on that, and thanks again for Thank your you. support. I appreciate it, my friend. I will let you slide over a chair, and uh, you get the uncomfortable chair for a while that the other Jimmy has been. Well, that's uh, so low, he might have to raise it up. Okay, well, it does have a handle on the side. You can raise it up or lower it or whatever. Pause spare time where everyone wins. That's right. You get a skunk box and a 90. So that's pretty good. I uh, wish we had found more for you, Pastor Tim, but I'm glad that you uh, you got to search that yourself. Uh, John Jacobs says, nice, Pastor Tim. Stan Horn, are you still with me, my friend? Are you still here? If you are, you get to pick a box and I have to find my sheet of paper. 
Yeah, one of them kicks up the uh, footrest and the other one lifts it up higher. Yeah, I got it. I just put that together about a week ago. You are still here. All right, Pastor Tim, or not Pastor Tim, Stan Horn. <laughs> got Pastor Tim on the brain. Let me uh, flip this around. Give me a second on my camera. Yeah, flip it vertically. All right, Stan Horn, can you look up in the little bitty window? Here, I can make it bigger. In case your eyesight's like mine. I'll make it a little bigger temporarily. Here are your choices tonight, Stanhorn. The only thing you cannot pick are the uh, AV boxes. You can pick uh, B, oh, come back, B6 or B9. Uh, we are two for eight out of the B boxes finding silver. Uh, box seven had a 90 and a proof. You can pick the TT6 box. That's the turtle turtle box. Uh, box, uh, t we are two for nine in the TT boxes finding silver. You can pick a Dreadpool box. We've got Dreadpool one, four, six, eight, and ten. Box two had two nineties and two forties. And we are one for five in the Dreadpool boxes finding silver. Or you can pick the Pastor Tim boxes. We've only opened one. We just opened it. We opened PTA. We found two Nifsies and two miscellaneous. And we have everything, excuse me, but box eight available, Stan Hort. Hello, Kaylee. Good to see you. Welcome aboard. So, B9. Other Jimmy, you got to locate B9 and hope it's not a bottom box. So it can't be too deep because there's only two of them. Okay. It is a bottom box. No, it's a top box, but it's upside down. So, this oh. is what I've seen. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they both said B6. He has located B9. If you would show that B9 to that camera over there, let me take my camera back down first. There's B9. All right. Stan Horn, do you have a particular silver item you would like waved over your box for good luck? Possible time, other. Stan Horn, if you don't want B9, you can have one of the other ones. Just tell me. I don't know what you're trying to say to me, my friend. And if you don't have a favorite silver implement, I do. I'm going to take the entire new roll, 20 Charlie Brown, 20 Charlie Brown silver rounds. Let's show them how it's done, the other Jimmy. All right, there you go. Wave that over that box and see if it will bring us a little bit of luck. Now the other Jimmy has a knife out. When Paul did a knife the other night, I made people nervous, so don't cut yourself the other Jimmy. My liability insurance is not paid up. If All I right. cut myself with my own knife, <laughs> <deserve>. <laughs> not my fault. Okay. All right. Stan Horn, good luck. Uh, the other Jimmy and Pastor Tim have switched spots. I am going to Watch, yeah, you bet. Let her rip. Good luck, Stan Horn. Let's find an ender. Pa, did you see Rob's 1913 V nickel? Uh, no, John Jacobs, I did not. I had heard that was a tough year to get. B9. I had heard that was a tough year to get. This is box B9. B9. And I gotta put the two NIFCs up here and the two miscellaneous. Mm -hmm. Not see anything on that side? No. Nope. What about that one right there? Looks a little funny to me. I don't mm -hmm. know that it is. It's probably a 71. 
but on the screen it looked a little funky. 97. A 97. Well, <laughs> that ain't worth much. Well, why don't you give them a flip and let's see if there's anything on the back side. Not real? No, John Jacobs, I missed that. I'm a little behind on videos. A little behind on videos. Yes, there is really another box to go through, Sandy H. This will be the last of the night, and we will have uh, giveaways at the uh, end of uh, this box. We usually do at least two boxes on Coinsomniacs. Not always. Sometimes Paul's tired and only does one. But I got help tonight, heck. <laughs> We're doing at least two. <laughs> I think we've got 20-some boxes on the floor over there, like 25, so uh, we, uh, we're in good shape. These are mulligan boxes. That means Stan Horn was uh, skunked on Saturday night and chose a mulligan box or a do-over uh, instead of taking skunk silver. And uh, Stan Horn gets any and all fines in this box. Pastor Tim, I forgot to offer you uh, a trade for your NIFCs. You had the option of trading your two uh, NIFCs in for a uh, war nickel, if you so chose, or keeping the NIFCs. We'll just keep them. They're already wrapped up. <laughs> all right. So I'm willing to give you a war nickel, too, since you're here. There would be absolutely no free. As a matter of fact, I'll, even, I'll trade you up to a Merc Dime. Because I'm not going to have to ship it anywhere. Although it'd probably ride for free with the rest of the package. Are you seeing any silver on that side, Jimmy? No, I am not. Uh oh. I'll show it under the scope in a second. I, I can't see it with my eyeballs. Okay. All right, slide them to the side and pick you out a winner there, and let's find Stan Horn some goodies. I'm going to show Pastor Tim's. Merc Dime, real quick. A 1936, a little older. And no mint mark, so it is a P. That is the shortest shipping in the history of the channel. I handed it 18 inches to my left. All right, the other Jimmy unwrapping roll number one for Stan Horn. Seriously, is that ZZ Top? Yes, I have brought ZZ Top mm. in to hunt with me this evening. Uh, no, uh, you do see a couple of new faces in here with Paul tonight. I have directly to my left with the ZZ Top beard, uh, Pastor Tim, and uh, to his left in the purple shirt is the other Jimmy. They are both uh, subscribers and uh, frequent chat members of uh, the channel. And uh, Pastor Tim had been accumulating a lot of uh, donation prizes and gauze here and auction wins. And he kept saying, don't ship them, don't ship them, I'm going to come get them. And uh, he and the other Jimmy uh, jumped in the Tennessee Mobile today and they drove 10 hours over. Now in fairness, they were going to stop by and see another friend as well, but they did drive 10 hours over to see... Paul and the coin compound and were met with uh, they got great timing they got here right when the the hot chocolate chip cookies came out of the oven <laughs> they were still warm yeah <laughs> they were good and multi I'm gonna let you look at that one yeah goes. Sandy H glad you found us there's a lot of us coin somniacs out there Heather's chubby hubby good evening Maybe I already said that when you had to ask the ZZ Top question, but no ZZ Top. I don't know. Do you guys sing any ZZ Top or, you know, mm -hmm. spare time or anything? Do you have any Pastor Tim spare time? Probably as a pastor, not a lot of spare time. No. Hunting's about my only thing. Hunting, your only passion outside of work. I play some ZZ Top on guitar. Well, there we go. I've got a ukulele. I do not have a guitar, but I have a ukulele. Because when I retired, we watched this show on Netflix that I liked, and one of the guys played the ukulele, and I, th I made the comment to my wife, I need to learn how to play the ukulele. I was joking. Mm -hmm. My wife bought me a ukulele for uh, Father's Day or Christmas or birthday that year, and I Paul's not uh, learned how to play the ukulele yet. Mm -hmm. Paul hasn't put his face camera back up, and I'm upside down, and... 
it doesn't want to stay in place. Do y'all like Paul upside down better than right side up? <laughs> Probably a better look for me. Let me flip that camera back again. And I'll stop standing on my head. There I am. I think that's better. I think that's better. All right. Looking for some goodies for Stan Horn in his mulligan box. I can tell that's a beauty. I do have a handheld a scope if you want it, the other Jimmy. I will just have to lay eyes on it. That's okay. Uh, it can't be too far. It's, going, it's only going to be the 89. I'll, I'll just give you all the 89. This is what I usually use. You guys have heard me talk about putting my eyes on. Mm -hmm. I hook this into the table right there where your arm is. Mm -hmm. And then it uh, swings over here and I look through that. Yeah. And then I can see. It gives me Hudson vision. Gives me Hudson vision. Well, not quite as good <laughs> as Hudson vision, but I can see better. You guys okay temperature wise in here? Yeah, good. Okay, all right. For me. We got a lot of lights on. <laughs> you guys can you can see the uh, the Paul spare time setup. We do have a third monitor we're going to add that I haven't got up yet. Not exactly sure what I'm going to put on it. But something. Tune your ukulele up like a banjo. A lot easier to play that way. Jim Cantor, I don't know how to play a banjo either. <laughs> it's my problem. So I would have to have somebody tune it up for me like a banjo. Then I would have to learn how to play the banjo. So it seems like maybe just learning to play the ukulele or leaving it in its case. Because I've got, uh, Mary's got a uh, brother, well, I guess I have a brother-in-law that knows how to play it. So when he comes over, he, he uh, fiddles around with it, pun intended. Paul upside down makes it look like you have a dark beard. Oh, you could see the one dark spot? Maybe <laughs> I should go that way all the time. Paul had a hat on today. I probably should have left it on. I might have done a little bit of sweating dumping all those coins today. Or carrying them up. <laughs> oh yeah, carrying them up was not fun. A lot of times my son will do that for me. My 30 year old son has moved back in with this and he uh, will sometimes carry them up for me but uh, he had uh, come up with some kind of back ailment this week when it came time to carry the coins. Strange timing I thought. Yep. <laughs> so Paul got to carry them upstairs. And Pastor Tim didn't get here in time. And so. yeah, Pastor Tim and uh, Jimmy were driving along saying, do you think he's done with the coins yet? You think he's, <laughs> you think the banks are probably closed by now. We can probably go ahead and go. <laughs> They're sitting there pulled over at a roadside barbecue, eating red meat that Paul can't eat. I wish we could have found a good barbecue place. We smelt one coming out here. <laughs> that, coming out, that was smell, good smell all the way to the interstate. Yeah. Uh, Might have been... Oh, far from what here the there's uh, one up the road called Fred's Hickory House that's that's, uh, that's mm -hmm. really good. So you guys came through town then. Yeah. You did. You didn't bop back on the interstate and around. You did the old through town. You got to see Bentonville in all its glory. I used to tell people when I tried to hire them, and our town has changed a lot since then. We used to have twenty thousand people in Bentonville and eight thousand people in Bella Vista. I used to tell them that uh, if we had sidewalks, I would tell you that they rolled them up at night. But we don't <laughs> even have sidewalks, so they can't even roll them up at night. That one's more um, for a beauty king anyway. <laughs> All right, I'm going to grab me a glass of ice water. Do either one of you want something to drink? No, I'm good. Uh, I'll take I a just water. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, it is an eight ounce. No, it's not. It's an eight ounce. Oh, we had a pattern. Tough paper in Arkansas. <laughs> I was having trouble opening them too. Now Hudson likes to sell my stuff when I'm outside of the room. Did you guys happen to make any sales while I was gone? We didn't sell it, but we took some. Oh. <laughs> Here's your water, Jimmy. Thank you. Sure you don't want something, Pastor Tim? No, I'm good. I I got some over. I don't just make okay. it. I'll be right back. Y'all are charged. Here's a shiny 96, but that's a good book filler. Still no silver. Uh, you might want that shiny 96. I'm slower looking at them than you are too. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just slow at everything. This thing to the end. <laughs> he found a, this is a good deal. Shiny 96, he might want. All right. Got a shiny one for your book stand to check. Wrong screen, Paul. It is a pretty 96. I will throw it in. That way you've got something setting up there at least, Dan. It makes me feel a little better. Makes me feel a little better. You know. We have found a 90 in these V-boxes. So maybe we'll pop something. I have both banjo and ukulele. Two fingers for C, three for F, and one finger for G. Jim Cantor, are you giving me the finger? Is that... <laughs> I don't know. Hey, Paul's not a musician like Ken. Ken Ken knows what you mean. But uh, Paul, Paul not so much. I don't know if that was supposed to be offensive or not, Jim. But uh, I'm going to assume it was uh, meant to be helpful. But uh, it, uh, C, F, and G, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Stan. I don't know, uh, Jim. So are you a magi um, uh, yeah. <laughs> are you a magician? <laughs> are, are, do you do magic, Jim? Are you a musician also, Mr. Cantor, with your uh, bowling skills? I'm a magician. I can make Grammy's cookies disappear. Yeah, me too. <laughs> we do know how to make Grammy's cookies disappear. We're good at that. Ah, oh, Dar Silver said you got me curious now. <laughs> I don't know if you still got my email or not, Dar Silver said you should, because I know we traded yeah. some emails. But uh, when it's appropriate, uh, bring me in. I want to know. I know with you doing it with Rob, it'll be awesome, Dar Silver said. I know it will be awesome. I have no doubt. Something you all are going to want to be checking out. We've got. Uh, we're right at 40 people hanging with us here at 12.30 at night, hanging with Pastor Tim and the other Jimmy and Paul. 
gave Hudson the night off. Hopefully he's doing some sleeping. He got school tomorrow, don't he? He got school tomorrow, yep. I pick him up from school tomorrow and take him to hitting lessons. And then I uh, think I'm taking him to, he's got a uh, baseball practice tomorrow too. And then Friday I pick up Hudson and Rhett from school. And then we go get Grammy from work. And we are going to the Naturals game. And then they're spending the night. And on Saturday we're going to the coin show. And... Uh, on Saturday night, we are going to the Naturals again. And then on Sunday morning, Hudson and I are doing a mom and pop penny box double header. So the boys are going to be here a few days. So that will be fun. Are you going to that coin show tomorrow or are you waiting until Saturday? I'm, I'm, I may swing by tomorrow because it's first day. I don't know when. I have to... Uh, what is it I have to do tomorrow? There's something I got to do in the morning. I may I may go by sometime tomorrow, um, but I'm taking Hudson on Saturday and meeting uh, uh, Treasure Hog and uh, and uh, Shannon Smith. Mm -hmm. I think the three of us are going to meet there about noon on Saturday. But I may I've never been to a coin show, so I may pop in. If you guys are going to go, I might pop in. If you guys let me know what time you're going to... I know you're not going to want to dally around and get home real late. But if you all decide to go... Well, we might. We'll think about it. We can give you a call. Okay. We're, uh, we're going to rest in a little bit in the morning. Oh, good for you. I think you've earned it. <laughs> Jim Cantor just played a lot of music with my dad when he was alive. Mostly ukulele, tune like a banjo. Well, that's very cool, Jim. I'm sure that's some special memories. That's awesome. I can't play the radio without getting yeah. started. <laughs> struggle. If my preset buttons aren't coming in, I've got trouble with the radio in the truck. Hey, at Paul Spare Time, do you know if there's a 1974 Kennedy DDR? There's not one I look for, but I can tell you real quick, because I have Variety Vista picked up, or, uh, pulled up. So hold on a second. And let me see if Variety Vista recognizes... Variety oh, Vista oh, does have a 1974 D DDR designation 001. So Variety Vista does recognize a 74 D DDR. I don't believe, I'm just sure, P PCGS does not recognize it. Variety Vista is the only one that has it. Okay, there you so go. I have one. You have one. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you would go to VarietyVista.com, click on half dollars, and uh, click on DDR, and then click on the 74D, um, it will take you to an example that will show you the pictures of the uh, one DDR they recognize. Uh, Heather's chubby hubby. I think that was you that asked that question. Yes, it was. Hey, I remembered something for more than a minute. <laughs> That's a victory. Hey, we got 46 likes. Surely we can get four more likes. It doesn't activate anything. We're going to give away what we give away anyway, but I, 50 likes would be just wonderful if you're sitting there wondering what to do with that blue thumb on the screen. Just give her a push. Prefer the up. And down will be okay, too. Did I miss a super chat? Holy, I guess I did miss a super chat. It just came in. Mrs. Chef Yoda, wow. A $50 super chat. Wow. Just because. Let's see SpongeBob come up on this screen and do a little dance for us. Do Come on, Spongy. I know you're tired. I know it's late. You can, there he is. Oh, Spongy's tired. Mrs. Chef Yoda, that is so very, very generous, and you are the stream boss. Thank you, Mrs. Chef Yoda. Wow. Thanks so much. We appreciate that. We may have to make a coin donation to uh, the other Jimmy and Pastor Tim on behalf of your super chat. Thank you, Mrs. Chef Yoda. I don't get this kind of extra talent in on Coinsomniacs. This is uh, this is rare. I can't. 
Although Hudson has a big desire to uh, be on Coinsomniac some night. This is outside his waking time. Um, so Paul is glad to have help. Summer's coming. He'll get to come. That's true. And Treasure Hog has talked about being my fill-in if Hudson has a, a night he can't make it over. But Hudson's attendance has been good lately. Treasure Hog, I don't know how you feel about third shift if you're even still here. <laughs> But uh, third shift is uh, pretty uh, available. Sandy Age 24 hour stream, I'm down. Hudson wants to do a 24 hour stream. Wow. I guess Nubs did one one time. And uh, Hudson has uh, expressed a desire to do a 24 hour stream. That would have to be something where I brought in a few other people to uh, switch out with. And I had, I'd had i have to get back up to a lot of boxes. Because <laughs> uh, we can do, you do about a box an hour is a, about the best you can do. So that'd be 24 boxes, which is right at what I have right now. So I'd have to build for a while. Since we don't have a Saturday stream this week, I am going to build a little bit. But we'll, have, we'll give that some thought, because Hudson does want to do a 24-hour stream. It is not a pay service, uh, Heather's Chubby Hubby. It is called Variety Vista. I will, uh, I will post the link for you. How about that? I will even post the exact page of that coin, if it will let me. So, uh, Heather's Chubby Hubby, I just posted the link. You should be able to click on that. And that's going to either take you exactly to the page with the 74D DDR, and it will take you to the site of Variety Vista. And Variety Vista is a very, very good site for anybody out there that is in, wants to get some pictures and help identify repunch mint marks. Uh, double die uh, reverse, double die obverse. It is, uh, it is, it is a very good site. One I have used a lot. Uh, I've got it pulled up right now because uh, the other Jimmy and Pastor Tim were searching for some things I don't normally search for, and I was needing some help uh, to see what uh, Variety Vista thought about them. Sheree Ward raid, awesome! Welcome, Coin Dude sixty six. Welcome Silver Bowl 30. We appreciate the raid. We are on box two of two for tonight. We have uh, 30, 34 rolls. Are we 11 in or 16? 11, 11. in? I'm sorry, 39 rolls left uh, in this box. This box is Stan Horns. At the end of this box, we will be having a uh, giveaway, so be sure and hang around. There is no comment video. It will be an in stream. It must be present to win. Spud Lee here all the way from Australia. Good to see you, Spud. Paul has a calming voice. Love to come in here. Well, Mrs. Chef Yoda, that is very nice of you to say. Uh, Donna Helton, how are you? B.R. Williams, Capital Currency Rage Reward sent me. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Sheree Ward. The Pizza Guy. Man, now you're making me hungry, Pizza Guy. I'm going to have to go get a cookie. Hey, Pizza Guy and Shereen. Oh. I've, uh, I've got a couple new faces in with me tonight that y'all may know. I've got uh, Pastor Tim and the other Jimmy in here. Pastor Tim had the uh, fortune or misfortune of being the first person to open his own mulligan box. We didn't find a lot, but he did a fine job opening it. And now the other Jimmy is opening the mulligan box for Stan Horn. So they drove. Hello, Sheree Ward. Thank you for sending a raid over. It is greatly appreciated. Hello, Greg Lee. Good to see you. Phenotypical. Really good to see you as well. I know I'm missing someone. Capital Currency, good to see you. B.R. Williams, I think I might have already said hi. Elton Jones, howdy, howdy. 
Welcome, welcome. We're up to 43 people with us at 12.30 at night on Coinsomniacs. Good to see you all. If you don't know what Coinsomniacs is, and you just stumbled over, holy moly. Avard Kirk, step away from the super chat button. <laughs> step away from the super chat button, Avard Kirk. There's Spongy dancing with the hundred dollar super chat from wow, Avergirt. Lost my internet, so on my phone, gotta run though, got early appointments in the AM. Thanks to Pastor Tim and the other Jimmy for coming by. Great job, guys. Avergirt, that is so super generous. Thank you. Thank you, Avergirt. Uh, Thank you. The other Jimmy and Pastor Tim coin fund for their services tonight has just gone up. That is very nice of you, Avercourt. As y'all know, we uh, reinvest all of our Super Chats right into the channel. And tonight, that's going to go. We're going to share it with the other Jimmy and Pastor Tim. So thank you. Capital Currency's going to make Spongy dance again. Spongy's going to dance. There he is. Thank you for the Super uh, Sticker. Capital Currency, $3 Super Sticker. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you so very much. I was going to do something a minute ago. Now I don't remember what it was. I was going to show <laughs> something. Oh, Coinsomniacs. That's what I was going to do. If you don't know what Coinsomniacs is, that's our Coinsomniac sticker. Do you guys have Coinsomniac stickers? No, yeah. I do not. I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't leave without a Coinsomniac sticker. This is the sticker, pretty much, with a, a little pause jargon on the bottom. But Coinsomniacs is uh, for the insomniacs out there that are also coin hunters. Laying up there in bed, 12.30 at night, can't sleep, don't have any boxes to hunt, capital, currency, a 99 cent, one dollar, got it, made in the shade sunglasses, super sticker, thank you very much, we had the pair a minute ago, and the pair was, give them a thumbs up, thank you capital currency. But uh, when you're laying there and you're dreaming the sheep and your sheep all say coin stuff on them, Benji, DDO, Silver, eh, this channel's for you. You can get up. We try to stream every Monday and Wednesday at uh, around 10 o'clock. We never know for sure. Um, usually it's just me, but tonight I've got help. I've got Pastor Tim and the other Jimmy with me. They drove 10 hours from Tennessee today. Pastor Tim had some, uh, some donation prizes here and some giveaways and some auction uh, items he had won. And he decided that, uh, eh, shoot, it's just in our drive. Let's go. You know, it's that Tennessee attitude. We got it. We got this. We're the volunteer we, state. We, yeah, that's right. We volunteered. And the other Jimmy happened to answer the phone at the wrong time. And uh, Pastor Tim uh, said, uh, hey, what are you doing? And uh, what do you, how do you feel about Northwest Arkansas? And here they are. So we're glad to have them here tonight. And hopefully the other Jimmy can drag some silver out of this box for Stan Horn. It's not looking good. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of box left. A lot of box left. Yeah, 30, 36 rolls left. Stan's patient. He's used to finding that. Uh, Finding it last row. Yeah, later. <laughs> Stan had a great box not terribly long ago, and then he's had some stinkers. So he's due for a uh, a good box. Heather's chubby hubby wants to know how you guys found that much gas to <laughs> get over here with this big gas shortage thing. Well, we didn't have it in Tennessee. We come over here, see? We started out, we already <laughs> had a full tank. Uh -huh. And then we didn't fill up until we got almost to Arkansas. <laughs> Pastor Tim and the other Jimmy might be doing a lot of walking this next week when they pull back into uh, eastern Tennessee, southeastern Tennessee with an empty tank of gas. But uh, you might have to dig out the bicycle and air up the tires and uh, maybe call a member of the congregation to come give you and uh, give you a ride around. I got an electric scooter. Electric scooter, there you go. You just need a long extension cord. Love Arkansas. Visit there annually. Uh, Arkansas is a pretty state. It really is. Northwest Arkansas is pretty. It's a very nice area to live. We're very blessed to be able to live here. Right now it's underwater, though. 
<laughs> we've had enough rain. <laughs> yeah, we've had enough rain. Uh, we don't need any more rain. Our lake, if, if it wasn't dark outside, if I opened the blinds right here, you'd be looking right at the lake uh, 22 steps away. Um, so it's right there. What would you think of the driveway, by the way? Oh, I <laughs> He said we might need four-wheel drive to get back about there. <laughs> you wouldn't be the first person I'd towed back to the top of the hill. I will tell you that. I got four-wheel drive. Uh, you're good. <laughs> My poor uh, air conditioning repairman, I have pulled to the top of the hill twice. Because his little pickup just won't do it. Treasure Hog, I'm always available for the third shift or a shift on a 24-hour stream. I'm looking forward to whatever action you call me in for. All right, Treasure Hog, I'm looking forward to it also. Got to get you here. For sure, Treasure Hog and Mrs. Treasure Hog have been here several times, but they've not been called into duty quite yet. They have offered. Yeah, that last row didn't have hardly anything. <laughs> we do usually find a lot of 73Ds and 74Ds, usually leading to a DDO. So uh, it won't surprise me if you locate one of those. Where is Shimpy? Yeah, I don't think I've seen Shimpy tonight. <laughs> Shimpy not make the transition. So, your reward. I don't know if you're still here, but thanks again for seeing the air sending over the raid. I appreciate it. I hope you had a good stream well, tonight. Maybe. I don't know if you were searching or auctioning there or what you're doing. Yeah, I see. All right. Oh, we've got a find for Stan. We've got a find. I'm hearing rumors of a shiny NIFC. Mm -hmm. Boom, there's a 2016D NIFC for Stan. Stan, you are on the board. Hopefully this leads to bigger and better things. Yeah, hopefully. That's our third NIFC of the night. First for Stan Horn. But you're on the board, Stan. Let's pause Nifsey. Y'all haven't heard the story. We do have a pause Nifsy emoji for the members because one night uh, Hudson had given me just a beautiful NIFC and I had it setting up there and we went through the box and he wasn't giving me anything else. And Paul kept grabbing the Nifsy and uh, putting it back under the scope and looking at it before realizing I had already looked at it. And I did it about eight times so it became known as pause Nifsy because... Uh, Paul got a little ADD towards the uh, NIFC. 24-hour stream and at least a 12-pack of Dr. Pepper for Hudson, and all will be good. Boy, Hudson, after a 12-pack of Dr. Pepper, might be bouncing off the walls. If we did a 24-hour 20 hour stream, I would definitely mix in some nickels. Shiny 96. Another Shiny 96. We get a ton of Shiny 96s here. I don't know why. I have told everybody, if you don't have a shiny 96 P&D in your book, then let me know, because we get so, so many here. I mean, I, we have found boxes where we'll find 100 shiny 96s in there. Wow. Got Paul's Nipsey. That's right, Rob Wenzel. I'm down to come up from L.A., Lower Arkansas, to help in a 24-hour stream. All right, Joe Layton. Duly noted. You'd have a pretty long drive, too. Darth Silver Sith is going to make SpongeBob dance again. He's $20 Super one. Chat says, What are some of your <laughs> best that? silver Vegas finds <laughs> and variety finds? Pastor Tim, why don't you take that one first? What are some of your best silver finds and variety finds? Well, mine, um, well I found uh, two, two 40s and a 90 what, last week. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a walk in Liberty. And uh, so uh, I guess the Walking Liberties is the oldest uh, silvers I found. Um, so uh, my, you know, I found some good um, you know pennies in um, in your uh, wheat pennies. Uh, you know, I found a bunch of those. So, uh, but for silver, I guess I found two or three Walkers in uh, boxes that I went through, and I uh, found a whole bunch of the uh, forty percenters. So uh, I guess that's the best ones I found. So, would uh, what would be the most silver you have found in a box? Uh, when I get two nineties and two forties in one I box. So four. Yeah. Two nineties and five forties. Oh, was it? Mm -hmm. No seven. Good mm -hmm. box. Real good box. Mm -hmm. 
I beat him. But I well, found well, 15 Nipsies in one box. 15 so. Nipsies. Oh, great. Mm-hmm. How about you, the other Jimmy? Well, the most I found is 290s and 840s. Hello, Aunt Orta. Two nineties and eight forties, a ten silver box. That's a good box. Yeah, that was my, my best box ever. Uh, my best find though was not silver, and it was not in a roll. It was actually laying in front of the coin machine at my bank. Okay. I found an eighteen eighty five gold coin. Are you kidding me? Nope. In the an floor 18- in front of the coin machine. So I think I've done something, or Hudson's done something, finding a gold coin in a mom and pop penny box. You find a gold coin laying on the floor at your bank in front of the coin machine. And I can vouch for that. I was with him the day he picked it up. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. He, he was quicker than you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, that's a, that's going to be a hard one to beat, the other Jimmy. Yeah, it is. Holy smokes. Yeah, boom, nice. By the way, Dar Silver said, thank you very much for the super chat. That was very, very generous of you. Hey, we've jumped back above 1,340 subscribers, too. Thank you all. Appreciate that. It's showing 44 people in the uh, channel. Nope, oh, down to 40. We lost four at once. <laughs> four they people. Choice. Four people. <laughs> Boom. Coin Somniacs and Narcoleptics at the same time. They have fallen asleep. Actually, if I go to sleep, the stream stays on. Yeah, unless you <laughs> fall asleep on the button, I guess. Um, so do, do you guys then typically search half dollars? Do you also do nickels and pennies, dimes, quarters? I do a lot of quarters and uh, on dimes. In our area, the only thing you get mainly are near dimes, and you don't ever find any varieties with it. You occasionally find a silver one. Yeah, in the dimes? Right. But I haven't found a Merc yet. So, I, I, found, Merc. I found 85% of a Merc one time out of a bank <laughs> box. I've got a Merc in my book that looks like somebody took a bite out of it. Oh, my goodness. And uh, <laughs> when I was searching, I saw a coin with a bite out of it, and I'm like, hmm. And Hudson's like, what? And he looks over, and he's like, that's a Merc dime. I'm like, well, it's not a whole one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's the only Merc dime we have found out of a uh, out of a bank box was that one with the bite out of it. I've only had two boxes and two hunts get double digit silvers. Box one, 11 silvers, two nineties and nine forties, and box two, five nineties and five forties. Best overall hunts, fourteen, six nineties and eight forties. Six boxes a week, thirteen hunts now. Cool, Darth Silver Sith. You know, if if you keep doing it long enough, you're going to hit a big one. Uh, Donna Helton says, Pastor Tim, what part of Tennessee? I'm 40 miles from Dollywood. Well, uh, we're down next to Chattanooga. Down so, in the Chattanooga area. Yeah, so that's about probably 80, 100 miles from her. <laughs> All right, so mm-hmm. it's a little closer than 10 hours. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> My wife and I... Uh, vacationed down in the Dollywood area a couple years back and uh, rented one of the cabins up in the hills and uh, just had a great time. So we do that. We, me and my wife went up and rented those cabins and uh, we also, uh, I love to go through and look for the deers in Cates Cove and uh, I go through that quite a bit. Uh, we'll go up there, you know, and we can get up there probably an hour and 45 minutes, two hours from my house. I like the bears in Cates Cove. That's we drove up what I would consider to be the mountain outside of uh, Dollywood, mm-hmm. and uh, we saw three bears run across the road in front of us, yeah. which is not a common. There are some black bears here in Arkansas, uh, not a lot up in the northern part where we are, but a, a few. But to see the bears out in the wild, and then we saw elk up there as well. So I thought it was really, and that was uh, there been a bad fire there, I guess. Yeah, and Donna Hilton, I'm sure you know very well but uh it was still recovering from the fire but uh, the new growth and everything there were animals all over the place you know one of my friends uh his mom and dad had a cabin up there and they lost the cabin of course insurance paid for it but you know but they did lose whatever was in it and Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, but they've got it built back now so and i guess it got close to what to me is like the north or the south end of town Mm -hmm. um 
the fire did. Um, somebody said they were in, oh, uh, Phenotypical says I'm in North Carolina, so not far away. Uh, there's the link for Can Can's channel. If you all have not checked out Can Can's channel and uh, considered subscribing, you are missing out. First off, it's a lot of fun. Uh, second off, Can Can's personality is awesome. Uh, he does great auctions. He does Barry Chase auctions. Uh, he does coin auctions. Uh, he uh, he'll sing. He'll play the guitar. You never know what uh, what kind of entertainment you're going to get from Can Can, but you know you're going to have a good time. The other thing is Can Can is setting in the 700 between 700 and 800 uh, subscribers, and Can Can is uh, trying to get to a 1,000 subscribers. And Brad Carney, speaking of a gold coin, the other Jimmy, Brad Carney has put up. A, uh, a five five dollar gold piece mm -hmm. uh, that he's giving away if can 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 get to a thousand su subscribers I think it's by June 8th so uh, chance to win gold I'll tell you Paul and Hudson won uh, Southern medals 1,000 subscriber giveaway and we won a gold piece and if you look to your left there uh, other Jimmy and uh, you see the slabbed coin on the bottom far right shelf. It's on the top row mm -hmm. That is the gold coin that we won from uh, Southern metal in uh, his giveaway <laughs> Yeah, and we do have some Hudson's lucky lint over there Hudson's got a quite a few uh, quite a good assortment over there on his uh, shelves it, It's about seems like every three weeks that I have to buy him a new shelf <laughs> I'm running out of space. I'm going to have to move my bear. It's just terrible. So check out Can Can, and if you would, give him a, 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 a subscription, and uh, let's help him get to 1,000. Mrs. Chef Yoda says, we had a gentleman who always came up for the Sturgis Rally named Chattanooga Charlie. All right. Do you know Chattanooga Charlie, Pastor Tim? No. No? Well, I have heard of him. Ah, the other Jimmy has heard of... Chattanooga Charlie. He has heard of him. This. Second in IFC. <laughs> the board again? Got another NIFC for Stan Horn. This one's a 2003D. All right. You're up to two Nipsey, Stan. You're up to two. We're still wanting some silver for the night. We are silverless as of right now. We don't like being silverless. Get uh, half a box, a little over half a box left. So, plenty of time. Heather's Chubby Hubby said, he's good enough, he's smart enough, and gosh darn it, people like him at Paul's Spare Time. Yeah, they do. Can Can's very likable. He's got a fun channel. It's one of the ones Paul checks in on a lot. I try to be there for the auctions. As a matter of fact, I have two auction items coming from King Gen that I won last Saturday right before we started our stream. And I'm very excited to get those. Grammy doesn't know about it, but uh, she might have a couple of birthday presents early because her birthday is not till October. So Paul is ahead of the game. I figure if I play my cards right, I might be able to complete Grammy's birthday shopping by October just through Can Can's Berry Chase auctions. It is quite possible. Not 71. Dude. Doing those gold galls last summer was fun, fun. Yes. Absolutely lots of fun. Dreadpool 26, I've had no luck on my past seven personal boxes. That'll happen, Dreadpool. Paul was always opening the extra boxes. What what am I looking for here? It's just shiny. Shiny 71? Mm -hmm. The shiny 71 I'm throwing in, Stan? Um, I was uh, chewing through some boxes, and I forget what the initial was. I kind of think it was C. Yeah, um, but, uh, <laughs> holy? Yeah. Yeah, somebody got their drill out. 
Um, you can have it if you want. I don't count those as miscellaneous because I don't want people damaging coins. Uh, roughly an $800 gold coin. 1885S PCGS AU55. $5 gold piece that they're giving away to get CanCan -Can to 1,000 subscribers. An $800 dollar gold coin if you two are not subscribed to can can you're gonna want to do it soon before it gets to that thousands you got a chance to win you a gold coin i know the other jimmy you prefer to find them on the floor at the bank <laughs> but this could be just a straight out win you, you, well, you can subscribe. have that you subscribe all right I am too. They're, both, they're both subscribed they're already in your count that's good thanks for supporting can can he's good people Probably not as good as barbecue up there near Paul's, Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue. Yes, we do have some pretty good barbecue around, even though I can't eat it. Uh, and we do have a big bike rally, not as big as Sturgis, but it is a huge motorcycle rally uh, called Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue. And if you get down on Dixon Street in Fayetteville, word is it's a lot of fun. Paul has not been. Paul has picked that weekend to find somewhere else to be because there be 10 gazillion motorcycles here and I do not ride a motorcycle. Um, so that's usually Kansas City weekend for us. But I know I've got a lot of friends that go to it and they have a great time. Paul Spare Time, thank you. And the notes are coming with the new items. Ah, oh, thank you, King Ken. Very awesome. Thank you very much. Kink, and I'm also very excited to see what Brad Carney gets from his uh, half a box of mom and pop uh, penny rolls that you sent him. I hope there's something amazing in there to reward him for his generosity of donating that $5 gold coin for your push towards a thousand. I also have an idea for you, Ken Ken, that I, I don't know how you're going to feel about it, but I do have an idea for you. So I will be sending you an email, Can Can. I'm going to write myself a note, because if I don't write myself a note, Pastor Tim might forget to remind me <laughs> after he goes home. I'm going to have to write some uh, down for Willie. <laughs> and, uh, Where is that coin option? <laughs> yeah. Or the, coin the coin show tomorrow? Yeah, I've got an email from uh, Treasure Hog that's got the address to it, so we'll pull it up. I can even print it out for you. I can even print it out for you. Barbecue is awesome, but it is nice to skip town when they get here. It's muffler madness 24-7 and all. Yeah, because we don't have a ton of... Uh, we're not a big place. And uh, we're 25 miles away from Fayetteville where the main event happens. But... Uh, it's there's motorcycles everywhere i mean it is uh, a lot of people having a really fun time and it is typically peaceful with no arrests or very few events it's just people having a lot of fun well that's no fun well mm -hmm. yeah I, know. I like watching people get arrested <laughs> as long as i'm not the one <laughs> getting arrested i guess that's okay there's the coin show let me figure out how to print this. And I will do it now while I am thinking about it. Actually, it does have a Bentonville address. I thought it was at a Rogers address. Might be closer than you think it does. Well, there are, you know, right there where you turned off the interstate tonight and you uh, turned back under the interstate, yep. mm -hmm. that is the uh, dividing line pretty much between Bentonville and Rogers. Mm -hmm. So they, you can't see tell where one starts and one ends, but that's where the, uh, the addresses and phone uh, prefixes change. And even if that does have an arrow on it, somebody hit it with a punch. All right, King <laughs> King. People will find unique ways to damage coins at times. I'm going to set this load out here so we can get it later. If I put it by the 
cookies, I know we'll wander onto it again. <laughs> Okay, I only printed one thing. And I'm not sure why the printer's still cycling. It may be going through <laughs> I don't know. Half, we, the, box half the box is done. All right, Jimmy, you've got to do better in the second half. Big responsibilities for you. Yeah, he's doing it for somebody else. I'm glad it's him. <laughs> <laughs> if yeah, I you, open mine, I don't find nothing. There ain't no problem. Yeah, you, 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 it feels different, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah it does. When you're opening for someone else, it feels different. There's a little pressure. They estimate over 100,000 bikes come every year prior to COVID. It'll be interesting to see how many come this year after missing last year. Yes, it will. Joe Layton says, I won the Southwest Arkansas State Championship Barbecue three years in a row. Wow. Joe Layton, you have so many talents. Uh, why couldn't I meet you before I was allergic to red meat, Joe? Because you could have... Man, do you know how good brisket sounds right now? Smoked brisket? Baby back ribs? Oh, anything smoked. Now, is he the one that does the carvings? He's the one that does the carvings. If hey, you'll... Joe, I got into that a little bit. Um, and I actually have a picture. I, I tried to find it a while ago. I may find it in a little while, but um, I couldn't find it before the stream. Uh, but uh, I carved out an elk uh, for my brother. I hadn't seen him in four years, and I wanted to start carving. So that's the first thing I ever carved. And it's like about three foot tall and uh, on a big old circle. And... Uh, I uh, carved out all the engravings in his neck and his eyes and everything and I actually took one of my dad's old deers that had been mounted and I took it apart and took the eyeball out of it and put it in it and uh, fixed it to where it would have one of my dad's things as a momentum for my brother and uh, he's out in uh, Oregon and uh, I only get to see him about every three or four years and uh, but but I carved that uh, elk, all, all the hair, all everything around its eyes, and everything. I mean, the whole thing, I hand carved it out. And uh, I shipped it to him and uh, gave it to him just, just you know, to tell him I, I, I loved him. And uh, so... Uh, That's and, cool. Well, let me show some of the stuff that Joe Layton can do. Uh, that means I've got to do this. Let me do this because I can get to the site quicker. Oops, that didn't work. Um, Joe Layton's website is not totally up to date. He is working on it, but I think that uh, I think that's going to work. There it is. And I will put this up where you all can see it while the other Jimmy's over there looking for silver for uh, Stan Horn. But this is some of the stuff that uh, Joe Layton has carved before. Mm -hmm. This is my favorite. I'm trying to talk Joe into maybe making another one of these for someone I know. <coughs> Me. Um... <laughs> Because, I mean, look at the talent in that. I mean, look at those dogs. I mean, that's just, that's just amazing. I just. Um, yeah. And he's got, uh, oh, this is one of my favorites. And Joe will not part with it. But he has carved out Ron here. Got my beard. That, uh, he's got uh, Pastor Tim's beard. He's got his carving knife in his hand and the carving that he's working on in his other hand. How? cool is that I mean that is just amazing but uh, Joe if you want to share your email if anyone would ever be interested in uh, getting uh, something from uh, Joe I'm not seeing uh, the Native American stuff tonight Joe but he's just got such yeah. talent to uh, be able to, to carve these out. And he does, uh, 
he uh, does take uh, requests and will uh, will make you something if you can uh, talk him into it and he is very very talented so uh, check out Joe and uh, There's Joe's email, Joe Layton, 1964 at gmail.com. And that is just very, very cool. Such talent. Yes, Budley, is that just amazing? Yeah, the, I was going to put the Native American up, but I didn't, I didn't see it. Um, and I... Uh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Mm -hmm. So we're going with actual size. Mm -hmm. We just sent you an email with those in it. Okay, I will put it up. But he's also got some uh, Native American stuff that is just beautiful. Oh, here's how I get to it. Come on, Paul. Check this out. Oh, I guess I better put it on the screen. Or otherwise, I'm sitting here looking at it and you all can't see it. <clears throat> Look at the detail in that. That's beautiful. I'm not that good. <laughs> well, I couldn't even draw it, let alone carve it out of wood. But I can't take a picture of it with my phone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, somebody that is just that good artistically awesome, yeah. it really is. is uh, it just blows me away. It just blows me away. So I did find the Native American stuff. And he does do fishing lures. Make sure and check out one formula. I figured it out, Joe. I, I was just being dumb. I yeah, uh, I forgot where the home button was. So let me check out. It's not here yet. Computer's grinding, making it work. All right, that email hasn't come through yet. I'll keep an eye out for it. It's pretty big. Last night I was having a hard time. There it is. Getting the email. There's three or four pictures. And you might want to pick out the best one. You probably have to blow it up. I'm have to get the details. I painted the backboard, but. That one. If you pull it up, you can see all the detail in the hair and everything around the eyes and all that. Yeah. All right. This is uh, what Pastor Tim was talking about that he carved for his brother that is totally amazing. An elk. A little bigger than my elk. Yeah, <laughs> pretty good size. A little uh, bigger than my elk. That's my first carving I ever did. Wow. Very mm -hmm. nice. Very well done. I had a friend of mine that does carvings uh, that taught me how, showed me how to do it. You know, just showed me what to do and where, you know, when I needed to do uh, things. But he, he didn't touch it. I mean, I did it, you know. But, uh, did you carve the antlers too? Or is I that did. Uh, yep. Wow. Very cool. I don't know if uh, Pastor Tim is uh, doing any additional carvings for anyone. I think he's pretty busy. Yeah, I stay pretty busy. <laughs> but that's beautiful work. Well done. I bet your brother treasures that. He did. Yeah. That is awesome. 
treasure the box of moon pies we seen too. <laughs> While spare time at Can Can Collectibles has a carved box that I made. It took two years to carve. Wow, Joe, that's amazing, Can Can. I'm jealous. You yeah, might have to send me a picture of that, Can Can, just so I can see it. I'd love to just see it. It takes a while. That cost that right there took me six months to carve. Wow. Uh, Joe Layton would like for you to send him a picture of it. I can probably do that for you right now if you don't mind me forwarding that no, to him. No, send it to him. Send him all of them up here. All right. I will send them to you, Joe. Slow down all On his <laughs> way. Actually, I'm trying to On his way. Well, Stan Horn, I promise we're trying. Mm -hmm. You've got 20 rolls left, Stan Horn. And you got a bunch of coins uh, that are still being checked for uh, varieties and airs. There's probably 20 coins over there for that that we're uh, still looking at. So uh, there's still time. Jack Gallman says, Joe, how tall are the Indian Chiefs? I don't know, but I know Joe will know. But they are beautiful. They are. Holy smokes. Wasn't he the one that laughed at us when we told him where the bathroom was earlier and he said that us two old men were going to be the ones that had to go pee all the then time? Then he'd been twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. We got cookies and water in him. We got him functioning. There you go. The other Jimmy is on a temporary break, which Paul has been known to do in every single stream I have ever done. Joe Lake wants to know what kind of wood you use, Pastor Tim. Well, I'll tell you a little secret about that wood. Um, and what this all started with was uh, <clears throat> a little story. Uh, my brother, um, he got into forged in fire and started making knives. And so one day, we hadn't seen each other in about four years. And uh, like I said, it takes a while for us to see each other. And uh, so he sends me a knife. And he had killed an elk, and he made the um, handles out of elk bone. And he had uh, took a rope that he used off his tree stand, and he had put it, inlaid it in with the handles, and he had made this knife from scratch out of a leaf spring that had belonged to my dad uh, and some dad's old truck that we had together and stuff. And so he made this knife and sent it to me and, you know, wrote me out this little thing that he did it because he loved me. And it uh, brought tears to my eyes. So I decided to uh, make the elk and send it back to him, you know, and uh, for something to do that with. Uh, and uh, But the two, wood I took was his church. He's a pastor. Uh, and like I said, he's in Oregon. He's in Sweet Home, Oregon. Uh, and uh, 3,600 miles from where I am. Uh, and uh, so he had donated a bunch of benches to my church. Uh, and uh, from his first church, and he's had three or four different churches. I'm on, I'm still at my first one. I've been there 18 years. Uh, but anyways, we didn't use all the benches. So to make this thing personalized to him, like he did the knife to me, using it out of daddy's metal, using the handles out of the uh, his elk, using the rope off his tree stand and stuff, to just to make it personalized to me. Uh, I turned around and we had an extra bench or two that had got broke that uh, didn't, they were like 20 something feet long and uh, one of them, you know, got tore up anyway. So I took the end off, which was solid oak, uh, two inches thick piece of oak, and I took that end off of that bench. So it actually came from his church and I used that piece of wood and uh, I carved it out of it, and then I turned around and I took one of Dad's deer heads that was at my house, uh, and uh, I took it apart and took the eye out of it, and I put that in there. So I used his oak, solid oak, uh, end of a church pew, uh, and I used the eye out of Dad's thing, plus I did all of the work myself, and so it made it personal to him. So just to let each other know that we care for each other you know he did stuff like that and he sent me a couple of more knives since then and uh then what uh, the other jimmy was talking about there a minute ago was uh last week i went to sam's and i bought a, a big box of moon pies and my brother loves moon pies well they don't have them in oregon so he can't get them 
So I wound up buying that box of moon pies for a little over twenty dollars. Cost me over twenty dollars to send it, but I sent it without him knowing it, and it showed up at his house today. And uh, I just said because I love you, you know, on it, and uh, so I gave him my whole case of uh, moon pies, and. Uh, so we do things like that back and forth, but I use solid oak, and uh, it was very hard wood, and uh, I'll tell you right now, when you go to grind it on solid oak, that's probably 35, 40-year-old oak um, that's seasoned out like that. You're talking about getting rid of some uh, carbon edges <laughs> and work on it. <laughs> that is a but cool story. story. Metal Dragon Braveheart says you could write a book from this story. So Man. cool. You know, the... <laughs> one of the, uh, the one thing does come to my mind is the poor lady that is sitting at the end of the broken church pew every Sunday <laughs> that has to look kind of uh, crooked at Pastor Tim up there as he preaches. <laughs> so maybe the moral of the story is don't send anything wood to Pastor Tim. It's supposed to have a durable use because uh, he may be multi purpose it. <laughs> Carve something out of it, man. Yeah. Chubby Hubby says, harder than hard. <laughs> yep. Home of the moon pie up the road a bit from me, says Metal Dragon Braveheart. <laughs> I'll tell you what, moon pies and Walmart history are linked because uh, Sam Walton himself chose moon pies one year as his uh, VPI item, which was stood for volume producing item. And he cut a deal with the uh, company that makes moon pies and uh, negotiated a price and those say I don't know if they were five for a dollar or they were ten for a dollar this is back in the 80s and when Sam Walton the chairman of the company picks an item that you're gonna have a contest all the executives had a contest every year to see who could sell the most units and dollars there were prominent displays of moon pies in every Walmart store, like to the roof. <laughs> and we sold the fool out of moon pies uh, that year. Um, I don't know what percent of the American population uh, ate a moon pie that year, but it was a lot. And that was back before Walmart is near the size it is today. Walmart was probably the, I don't know, fifth or sixth largest retailer back at that time. But uh, Sam had a an affinity for uh, moon pies. Joe Lake says the coin hunter was carved out of uh, base wood. I think I think it's base wood. Could be basswood from Northwest Arkansas. Hmm. Cool, Joe. That that is such a great piece of art. Uh, I, I when I looked at that thing, and I mean. You have cool stuff just all the way through that creation. And the detail you have in that with the knife, with his own carving in his hand, the look on the face, the beard, I mean, that there is just so much character in that carving. It's amazing. Also invented marshmallow fluff <coughs> there. <coughs> Sell it in seven-gallon buckets. That sounds like a lot of marshmallow fluff. I guarantee you. What does one do with seven gallons of marshmallow fluff? I could eat it. Make Rice Krispies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many Rice Krispies do you need to, uh, to go with that? It would have to be a lot of boxes. I guarantee you. Joe Layton says, I remember the Moon Pie Contest. Yes, I remember it well. Has anyone chat in chat ever drank Moxie Soda? I yeah. have not drank Moxie Soda. <clears throat> Metal Dragon Braveheart says invented in Bangor, Maine. Hmm. Never you got a it. silver or something over there for me? Nope. What do you got? No? Oh, <laughs> you're just feeding Pastor Tim coins. Yeah. I got it. Sam Walton also I'm trying to slow down a bit. enjoyed selling American made and hunting and fishing. Had a bird gun named the Walton Special. Yeah, phenotypical, he did. He was big behind uh, Made in America. When I was in merchandising, it was a, uh, a very important thing that if we could buy a uh, product made in America at a competitive price that we would do so. And uh, we kept a lot of jobs uh, very proudly in the United States. And Sam was an avid hunter. Walmart, we work six days a week. And uh, as executives, we work six days a week. And every Saturday we had a company meeting. 
and it started at uh, 7 30 in the morning on Saturday and you went in and Sam always led that meeting and uh, Sam frequently because he was an avid bird hunter I mean an avid bird hunter and uh, Sam had uh, his own planes and we had Walmart corporate planes they were turboprop Navajos back then Sam if he was flying down to Texas to quail hunt would uh, frequently bring his bird dogs and be dressed in his bird hunting uh, gear and run the Saturday meeting uh, in such a manner. And uh, he was heading down to, I think it was Fal in the Falfurious, Texas area, to uh, quail hunt. He and Bud Walton both loved to quail hunt. It was absolutely, other than retail, uh, bird hunting was Sam Walton's passion. Well, retail and people and bird hunting. Uh, very cool man. Dar Silversith, I'm getting calluses on my thumb knuckles from opening <laughs> rolls. Uh oh, might have to take a break. Make moon pies and fudge, says Joe Layton. Now that sounds good. <laughs> You're gonna make me hungry again. You're gonna make me hungry. Well, I'm making killer fudge with marshmallow fluff. Oh yeah? Oh, it's delicious. A marine friend of mine applied for seven years to get out tags. He set the world record for a moose two winters ago. Very cool. We do have a. Uh, they replanted elk in Arkansas, and they have grown enough. Uh, it's uh, it's like a couple two plus hours from here um, that they do have a hunting season but there's only like 20 tags a year and I have applied every year and uh, it, it's pretty much it is a lottery but it'd be like winning the lottery to get one but we have some uh, really big elk uh, in the uh, in the mountains in uh, central Arkansas I gotta say I've never seen a seven gallon bucket of marshmallow. Do you buy your seven gallons at a time? No. <laughs> no? Okay. So there must be smaller containers then for the uh, the regular consumer. You'd have to be a diehard, I think, to want seven gallons. But uh, what do I know? I've not tried it. That'd be death for a diabetic. <laughs> yes, it probably would. That's you, probably the reason I am a diabetic. Uh, <laughs> just go ahead and eat the sugar right out of the bag with a spoon. Right. All right, we have 16 rolls left, counting the one in the other Jimmy's handstand. Still looking for some silver for you, or some anything. We got two Nipsies right now. Megan and I finally found a 1920s to fill a spot in our penny book. That took a lot of boxes to find. Congratulations, Kevin. It's kind of like my uh, 1950D nickel that I am bound and determined to find. Hudson and I have two open spots in our nickel book. And the 1950 has eluded me. But uh, with the 60-some boxes we have in the house, maybe it's in the house and I just don't know it yet. But they just didn't make very many of those. We've all got our nemesis. That one is mine right now. Only been to Arkansas once to Fort Hope when Al Gore came to give my brother a award. Took forever to find a place to watch the Super Bowl that sold beer. <laughs> well, yeah, Metal Dragon, for a lot of years in Arkansas, there was a blue law, and you could not buy beer anywhere. But on Saturday night around closing time, those places were busy. People were buying it by the cart full. But... Uh, now, uh, at least part of the blue law is uh, gone. Jill H says, possible time. You can buy fluff in small jars now at Walmart. All right. I'll have to check that out, Joe. I'll put it on the shopping list. That'll give Grammy some fun. I'll just write marshmallow fluff and see if she comes home with a seven-gallon bucket <laughs> or a little jar. Dar Silversith getting a box of nickels tomorrow. I'm excited. Haven't hunted nickels since January. You know, for as many as I have, Dar Silversith, 
I haven't hunted nickels in a while either. I was doing them occasionally on Coinsomniacs, and we weren't having so many mulligan boxes, but I haven't been able to do a nickel box in a while. And we were finding a, a lot of uh, war nickels and buffalo nickels. We were doing some nickel dating. It was a lot of fun. I love hunting nickels. There's nothing better than a silver box that's loaded, okay? But uh, nickel boxes on a regular basis, there's so many cool things to look for in a nickel box. Uh, love doing nickel box battles with Hudson. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> I found one roll hunting, pause for a time, but I don't think people believe it. You found one roll hunting. All right, what did you find? Oh, you found a 50D? Well, lucky you, Heather's Chubby Hubby. That's what I want to do. I could buy one. Uh, whichever one's the most rare, Joe. Is it the P? Uh, I'd have to go grab my book. It's the one that there's only like two million made of. I, I never can remember. I think, yeah, it's a 50D. A 50D and a, a 39D or a 38D are the two that we're missing. Um, and... Uh, we're bound and determined to find them and not purchase them because it's personal at this time. Are there any 1920s buffaloes that are rare? 1920s buffaloes that are rare. Well, I can tell I you this. I don't. One rare. I haven't found one yet. Are you? I think meaning the 1920s in total, not just a 1920 maybe. Let me look real quick at PCGS and I can answer that because I don't know off the top of my right, head. Right there, Let's see. It looks like a uh, 1921S is a very rare well, buffalo well, nickel. Well, let me see it. Can be worth a That's mega a dollars. Uh, a uh, 1920D is worth uh, 18 bucks in a grade 4. A 1924S is worth $21 in a grade 4. A 1926S is worth six, uh, $26 in a grade 4. And a grade, if you find a grade 60, it's worth 5 grand. That'd be pretty nice. So mm -hmm. those appear to be... And what I did is uh, I went to PCGS, and if that's uh, not something you uh, use, PCGS is a uh, very good location or good uh, site, PCGS.com, Dreadpool26. You can go and go to the price guide, and uh, it it reflects coins on a very high end of retail and what they're worth but uh, PCGS will give you an idea of value of coins you can look it up by type and by year by mint mark PCGS price guide is a, uh, a very good site to go to they also have help on uh, grading coins on there they have uh, a pictorial uh, grading on uh, by different types of coins that you can look at and kind of get an idea of what grade your coin might be Brian Rollins, good evening. No, Drip, I kind of, I went through all the different ones that uh, had a higher value um, on PCGS. So you can look up PCGS.com and check them out if you need more detail. 1916 D Dime. Yeah, Joe Layton. My best box. I found six Indian heads. Rhode Island boxes rock. That's why RFT lo always loses to them. Yeah, Rhode Island boxes are good. They appear to be. Yeah, John Jacobs has the 21S, 24S, and 26S as coins. Buffalo nickels in the 20s dread pool that are valuable or more rare. Brian Rollins, we're having a good time. I've got a couple guests with me. I've got Pastor Tim in the blue shirt and in the purple shirt. I have the other Jimmy. They're two of our subscribers that drove up from eastern Tennessee, kind of eastern Tennessee, I guess, mm -hmm. southeastern. Southeast. Uh, Ten hours they drove up here today. Pastor Tim had some stuff to pick up from me. 
and they had another friend they were going to try to see while they were here, and they've got a 10-hour drive back tomorrow, and uh, Pastor Tim got to hunt his own mulligan box, but uh, the box didn't cooperate. He got skunked, and now we're, uh, the other Jimmy is hunting for Stan Horn with 12 rolls left, and the other Jimmy doesn't seem to be really good at this. I just don't mean anything personal by that. I don't think you can hear me right now, but the other Jimmy has uh, found two NIFCs and three shiny coins for Stan. And, uh, another shiny. I know, oh, another shiny coin. We got a 1971, a beautiful 71, and a really pretty 71. I thought it was an NIFC. 71D. In a row. Yeah, that's a pretty one. So we'll throw that in. That's four shinies for Stan. Stan's like, okay, I like the shinies. That's fine. But I like shiny silver even better. Mm -hmm. I like shiny silver even better. Paul, is that old timer knife he is using? Is that an old timer brand knife you're using? No, this is a, uh, what is this? It looks like a case. No, me. it's an SW cut. An SW cut. Yeah, this is okay. a bow water safety knife. Given out to everybody that worked there for four million safe man hours. Cool. Four. That's a lot of safe hours. Mm -hmm. That is a lot of safe hours. At uh, and if you know anything about Bowwater Paper Plant, it's amazing. That there was four hundred safe hours yeah. at that plant. At uh, Walmart, we used to do the the safety challenge thing, and if you went a whole year without an accident in your store. And this is back mid '80s when I was working the stores. You've got a beautiful white uh, jacket, and uh, I wore that thing with pride because I was in a Pella, Iowa store, and we went a year without an accident. We were one of like ten stores in the chain that went a whole year without an accident. Because you get, you know, we were a smaller store. We had 100 employees, associates, and some of the bigger stores had two and three hundred. You got that many people using box knives and working around uh, lifting stuff and everything. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it's just the uh, mathematics get you that someone's, yeah, falling off a ladder. I've got a cousin that works for First Fleet, and uh, they give out those jackets for uh, safe driving miles. And uh, he's been with them about 28 or 29 years now. And I think uh, it, the last check that he got was for three million miles without a wreck. Wow. And, uh, so. well, that's just amazing. He's proud of his jacket. So. I bet he is, and he should be. He earned those things because, uh, I mean, you got to be thinking when you're driving that many miles all the time and being careful because it can happen so easy and so quick. And it's, I mean, a lot of times it's not your fault. It's somebody else's. Pull out in front of you or something. Yeah, exactly. Cujo, music and coin collector. Good to see you. Yeah, uh, we did find silver last night. We found a couple of 40s for uh, Treasure Hog. But uh, we are down to like 11 rolls left for Stan Horn still looking for silver. And we just haven't found any yet. I love Buffalo Nickels Dreadpool 26 as one of my very favorite coins. I think the design and the artwork on a Buffalo Nickel front and back are just beautiful. Here's a fun fact. I was Dreadpool 96's first donator. Really? Hunt live stream. Well, very cool. I've got your first donator here, Dreadful. <laughs> very awesome. I was one of the first donators for uh, Nubs and uh, Baseman 64. I can't say that I was the first, but I was one of the first. Treasure Hog found a 55 dick D nickel today while walking his dogs. Wow. <laughs> Too bad it had been run over many times. Still, though, Treasure Hog, what an awesome random find. Holy smokes, that's great. Ten rolls left. Okay. <laughs> I've got 
to tell this. All right. If I find no silver in this box, <laughs> it's going to be my fifth box in a row. Uh oh. <laughs> skunk box. Oh, you didn't tell me you were on a skunk strength yet, Jimmy. You didn't tell me. They used to be works of art. Now coins are flat. I agree. But the old coins are so much better than the newer coins for the most part. Absolutely agree. Is that Darth Silversith on the other camera? No. Uh, Cujo, I have with me Pastor Tim to my right in a blue shirt. And I have the other Jimmy that uh, they have come up to visit me from Tennessee today. A 10-hour drive. Uh, Pastor Tim had some stuff here he needed to pick up. And they had a friend in Arkansas that they wanted to swing by and see. So they drove on up to the coin compound, and so I put them to work. And Pastor Tim had to open his own mulligan box. It's like, yeah, you can have a mulligan box, but you're going to open it. And uh, that didn't go so well. We found some nifties and a couple of miscellaneous. And so the other Jimmy was here, so I thought it'd be good for him to open uh, Stan Horn's box and feel that pressure. Feel that pressure when you're opening for someone else. Stan Horn's like, yeah, thanks for making me the guinea pig. <laughs> I know. Paul has delivered uh, his fair share of skunks to people, unfortunately. But on the 22nd of uh, June, May, not, not June, May, 22nd of May, we will be doing uh, six boxes, and we are donated out for that stream, and we will be looking for our 32nd Saturday stream in a row, Finding Silver. That would be pretty special if we could do it. That's a so. good thing we're getting rid of these skunk boxes now. <laughs> yeah, if we, if all we're doing is culling skunk, we got to cull skunk sometime. Sandy H says, I really don't care for silver. I love old coins. I like both, Sandy H. If you combine a Morgan, a Morgan dollar and a Buffalo nickel... They, I think those are my two favorite coins. I really do. I really think those are my two favorites. Uh, I do love a Flying Eagle scent. I do like an Indian head scent too. But uh, uh, Morgan was my first ever coin and uh, gifted me on at birth by a, a great grandfather. And uh, I just fell in love with the Buffalo Nickels on my own. Is there even a key date for Clad Washington or Kennedy? Um, well, in 19, the, for Kennedy, half dollars, Darth Silversith, any 1970, especially I think a 70D, would be as close to a key date as you're going to get on a uh, Kennedy. Um, because there just aren't very many of them. We found a few 70s. Um, for uh, the quarters, uh, not that I know of. When Copper Owl Coins first started streaming, I donated for five rolls, and he found his first 90s in my rolls. Kennedy, cool Jim Cantor, and cool Copper Owl Coins. That is great. It's possible I could find a 32 S or D in a box, but it's already so hard to find any silver quarters. <laughs> Let alone a key yeah, date, silver quarter. Yeah. Silver quarter. I, the next silver quarter I find will be my first. Yeah, Flying Eagle Sense. I, I love it. I love the the Canada Bird scent, too. And there's a lot of similarities, I think, in those coins. Um, I, I did buy a Flying Eagle Scent or two from John Jacobs. Maybe one for Hudson's birthday coming up, and he has received one since then too, but he is in love with it, so he is going to be very surprised because it's been sitting on the shelf for a couple months already, and it's going to sit for a while. I hear buffaloes are tons of fun to hunt and search for varieties. I think I own one buffalo. Oh yeah, Sandy H. And the thing is, Sandy H., you can find buffalo nickels in bank boxes. We have found uh, like uh, 50 or 60 Buffalo Nickels out of uh, somewhere around 100 boxes of nickel searched. So it is not unreasonable to think you could find a Buffalo Nickel in a, uh, a bank box of nickels. Very, very possible. Turn it 
talking about your first coin from your grandfather? Uh-huh. Uh huh. My first, I think it's a 1921 uh, silver dollar. My grandmother gave my dad when I was born, and uh, he still had it when he died, and he gave it to me, uh, you know, and he had saved it for me. And uh, so I have that that silver dollar That's uh, awesome. from way back then. Yeah, I have a, uh, a Morgan silver dollar. It's 1890, I forget. It's in my copper piggy bank given to me by another one of my dad's friends. Uh, and they uh, put my uh, Morgan dollar in that copper penny ba- penny bank and uh, copper piggy bank and gave it to me when I was old enough to know how to take care of it. And that was my prized treasure. That was in the top drawer, hidden it under the sock so no one would steal it. And I loved that coin and I still have it. Yeah, the 87 um, Nipsey clad, and uh, we seem that we have found several 87s. A lot more 87s than we found the 70s. Those 70s are like hen's teeth. I have an 1857 Flying Eagle in VGF that will be going in the coin shop this weekend. Ooh, Treasure Hog teaser. Teaser. 1850. 57 Flying Eagle, very good find, going in the Treasure Hog coin shop. Why don't you, uh, Treasure Hog, would you like to list your uh, site? I will uh, grant you a temporary moderator status, Treasure Hog. And you can uh, put the link up to your site if you would like. What do you want for that coin? Uh, you, you've got a customer here asking for uh, what your opening bids are going to be. I don't know if you've decided yet, but... I can't tell if that's a feature. Hmm. Actually considered buying a nice toned one for my gall this summer. Uh, cool, nice uh, silver set. Always popular. Always popular. We are at five plus rolls left, Stan Horn. I hope you're still with me. Hope you're still with me, Stan Horn. I know we're not. Uh, we're not finding you no silver. You may got discussed and uh, left. <laughs> yeah, I hope you didn't take your ball and go home, Stan. We're trying. We are trying. I think that's what I'm wanting to do. Just, yeah. <laughs> the other Jimmy's not having a lot of fun right now. <laughs> He's sweating it over there. He is trying, I promise. I took a few weeks off dealing with the new land, but I'm ready to get back on it and get a bunch of stuff listed this weekend. I think, I think Paul wants to buy it now. Actually, it was uh, Pastor Tim that was asking what... Uh, what you might want for that coin treasure hog. Pa's always up for a uh, bargain. A, uh, <laughs> a flying eagle scent, but uh, that was Pastor Tim that was asking. Tim, I might even drive to where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's in the area, Treasure Hog. He'll even drive down. He's got to pretty much uh, go close to your house to leave town. <laughs> Although, actually, I think I'm going to send him north because the bridge is out um, on the uh, at the Mississippi. They closed the I-40 bridge today because they found a big crack in it. So they got caught in a traffic mess. Paul, wait till you see the Vam Peace Dollar I'm including in this call. They make me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Oh, I like that kind of coin. Trigger Rock says, PCGS listed at $40 to $50. I haven't compared to sold auctions on eBay yet, so I don't know the starting price. Probably in the $30 range to start. So, $30 to $50, Pastor Tim. Yeah. A grand half dollar, Yes. The grant, uh, are you talking the commemorative metal dragon? Hmm. 
I got lucky on Sue Hatton this week. She's such an amazing lady. Yes, and she has a big box of silver. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a big box of silver. Treasure Hog has uh, just listed the link to his uh, eBay store. Treasure Hog is a good friend of the channel, and Treasure Hog uh, is selling some really cool stuff on his eBay store. So make sure and check it out and see if there's something on there you just can't live without. We are down to four rolls. We need late roll magic, Stan Horn. We need late roll magic. I've reversed the order. <laughs> Start on the other side of the Late roll magic. We need, we need the, the knife to become lucky and open one up and just see something so silvery that uh, the other Jimmy is temporarily blinded. Why is it in the floor? <laughs> this is, I get that way. <laughs> <laughs> Hudson does that. Hudson has left that chair more than once and hit the floor. Yep. Yeah, we found a stone mountain not that long ago either. Uh, matter of fact, I think we found a Stone Mountain commemorative either the same day or the, the yeah, I think the same day that Rob Fine's treasure found one. Hudson found it. I think Hudson found it. Maybe I found it. I don't know. Kind of runs together. <laughs> Have you done so many? Yeah, I was uh, looking and we are approaching, I don't have it up. We are approaching 500 boxes of half dollars that we have opened. Tell Pastor Tim and the other Jimmy to come on down and we'll go to the diamond mine, says Joe Layton. Okay. Are you aware of the Arkansas diamond mine? Not knowing where it's at, no. Oh, well, uh, uh, okay. It is, uh, well, it's between us and uh, Joe Layton, I believe. Um, but... Uh, you get a go, and you uh, pay a little bit of money, and you can get a bucket and a strainer and a shovel and rent them, and you go out and dig in this plowed field, and uh, it used to be a diamond mine, and uh, people find diamonds there still, some big ones and some valuable ones, and uh, whatever you find, you get to keep. So uh, we've been uh, a couple times. I found a lot of uh, shiny stuff, but I did not find any diamonds. Another 96? Yeah. There's some shiny ones, aren't there? Mm -hmm. yeah. My dad used to go to the North Carolina and uh, ruby mines up there and uh, go into some of those and found some rubies. And, uh, and, but they brought it out and then you went through buckets full. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The uh, way they checked ours, you took the little shiny stuff at the end of the day and, or when you're on break and you took it over to a table and they tried to smash it with a rock. And if it smashed, it wasn't a diamond. <laughs> now, it didn't do any good for my little pretty shiny stuff I was finding, I'll mm -hmm. tell you, but uh, they are very small and hard to see. Yes, they are. I wouldn't really know because I didn't find any, but... Uh, um, the ones I've seen, even the ones they say are big, are little. And what's funny is a lot of times the people that find them will be a little kid walking along the sidewalk <laughs> that's not even looking for a diamond and bend over and pick up something bluish or greenish because they've got all different colors and find a five-carat diamond. Wow. And it's like, eh, that's no fair. <laughs> I think it's because they've got better eyes than us. Yeah. I am lucky, Metal Dragon. Um, I can do four-leaf clovers like that. Uh, my dad <laughs> could find four-leaf clovers like crazy. He, like, had supervision for them. Coins don't plug in. I'm glad that Hudson is as interested in coins as he is. He does like his video games, too. But I'm really glad that he likes doing this because it's something that uh, is not video games. I do not watch the Crystal Collector on YouTube. Is that one I need to check out, the Tool Freak? I'm not familiar with that one. 
I almost accused one of you of stealing my pen. <laughs> I couldn't find it, and Hudson's not here to blame. <laughs> Crystal Collector. I will check it out. I traded for a 1904 Canadian half dollar that American Eagle Hoarder found in his rolls about three weeks ago. Only 60,000 minutes. We'll be here tomorrow. Very cool, Jim. Very cool. That was a couple of months ago I found a uh, Apollo 11. I think it was a colorized half dollar in oh, yeah? my box. Yeah. Those are always nice to find, any of those colorized coins. Mm -hmm. I've got a big order of colorized coins coming in for the auction. Oh, they have a diamond tester now, Joe Layton. They have upgraded from the stone smashing. This is ma this is major news. Maybe some of my shiny stuff could come home with me. Dar Silverseth found five walkers already from only sixty-one boxes. That's very good. Wow. That's very good. Diamond Mind Ivan. Last roll coming up. We are in the last roll for Stan Horn. Oh, we need last roll magic, Stan. We need a last roll magic. He's going to be upset with the other gym. Mm -hmm. then. <laughs> I tell you, actually, my best silver find, mm -hmm. I was working at a grocery store as a bag boy. And this lady came in and bought $150 of groceries. And she paid for them with Benjamin X dollars. Oh my God! And I just happened to have the money on me, and I bought them from the cashier. Oh wow! And bought my first car with that. <laughs> oh, you did well. She paid a lot for those groceries, didn't she? Mm -hmm. Of course, that was back in the, I guess the mid eighties. Back when wow. silver was really, really high. Yeah. That's amazing. I found something that I didn't know I had. Um, my dad passed away, and I got his coin collection. And I hadn't really went through it uh, and looked at it um, until I started going through a lot of the other coins and things I've been doing. And uh, I wound up going down there, and he had a big stack of books that had pennies in them. That had the old wheat pennies in them. Yeah. But when I got to lifting up them and looking down through them the other day, I found a book that is full of Merc Dimes. Oh, wow. And I don't know how many is in it, and I don't know what all years they are yet, but but when I found it, I thought, wow, and I flipped through it, and it's got quite a few in it. So That is uh, awesome. That's but, a nice find. Uh, That's better than finding a spider in there for sure. Yeah. Uh, they see me, they run. <laughs> Yeah, Treasure Rock, we went in the middle of summer, too, the last time we went to the Diamond Mine, and it was not enjoyable. I, I sweated much. Very, very much. Well, did that uh, last roll, uh, you, you, you're still uh, mitigating uh, the situation over there? <laughs> yeah, I'm actually kind of waiting for Tim to get caught up. <laughs> All right. Tim's got uh, eight coins still to check for errors and varieties. Okay. We've got 40 people at 1.45 in the morning. Appreciate each and every one of you being here on Coinsomniacs. Thanks for the 61 likes. Last roll being open now. Come on, Silver. Come on, anything. No. That <laughs> bee box. Oh, wouldn't that be fun, Dreadpool, to go back to 1964 and get uh, boxes of half dollars? Yeah. Yeah. That would be holding. fun. <laughs> yeah. Store them somewhere and then come back and uh, go retrieve them. That would be much fun. Best variety I have found is a major DDO for the 76D Bicentennial Quarter. 
Dirty and slightly warm, but it's still a hundred and fifty ten dollar coin. I only paid twenty five cents for it. Very nice. Wow. Very nice. And the last coin. Nine. Wah, wah, wah. Well, I know you tried the other Jimmy. We still got uh, five or six coins to check for the air stand horn. I don't know if you're still with me. But I do have a prize picked out for you if you're here. And another prize picked out for you if you're not here. <laughs> well, there's some pressure. Or I should say awake, maybe. <laughs> we are approaching the two o'clock hour. Yeah, it's three o'clock where we came from. Yeah, that's true. Your your day got longer coming this direction, didn't it? Yeah. You got two coins left to check for Stan Horn. Get silver certificates for almost face value. You still make a nice profit. You had no kidding. Last one. Last coin of the night. Nope. Nobody home. Stan Horn, are you here? First off, 1251 out here, says the tool freak. You're not burning quite the midnight oil that the rest of us. Yeah, kit bags of Morgan. Bags of Morgan would be nice, huh? You got four shinies. You got two NIFC Stan. I don't know if you're here. I don't know if you're here. I do know you probably want. Yeah, that. Well, skunks uh, aren't allowed on Wednesdays in Arkansas or, or Coinsomniacs because we only open a couple boxes. So we know if we'd open another three or four boxes, we'd find silver, surely. Because eventually Pastor Tim and the other Jimmy would get better at this. And uh, they would find something. I think Stan Horn may have crashed and burned on us. <laughs> Stan, I'm going to trade your two Nipsies in, Stan, for a Merc Dime. I'm going to trade. If I'm wrong, you tell me and I'll give you a two Nipsies. But I got a feeling you'd rather have the Merc Dime. I'm really perplexed now, though, over which one of your skunk prizes to give you. Hmm, 1943 Merc Dime. No mint mark, so it's a P. So, Stan, I'm going to assume you're not here. But I will tell you this, Stan. You have been skunked. Too many times recently on Paul's spare time. You have been skunked too many times. We have had some very, very generous super chats tonight. So Stan Horn, you're going to get the first one of these that I'm giving away. Because I just got it today. I just got it today. So you're going to be surprised. You are getting a Peanuts Round. A Peanuts Silver Round, one troy ounce of silver. And it is the man himself, Charlie Brown. 2021 Peanuts something. Worldwide, New LLC. That is your Stan. You you got upgraded from a ninety tonight because you're a frequent donator and you've been too frequent a skunker. So that is going to you, Stan Horn. So I will get that out to you. In the mail. Uh probably on Monday. Yeah, the peanuts are cool. They are, they are. Let me get Stan packed away here. 
Well, the other Jimmy and Pastor Tim, thank you all for doing my searching for me tonight. It's greatly appreciated. I wish you had had better luck. And I know you do too. But uh, hey, that's coin hunting. Yep. Sometimes you yep. find it, sometimes you don't. That's why it's called hunting and not finding. That's right. So we are going to do a giveaway. We got 45 people up in here, so we're going to do two giveaways. So let me get this started. Let me wake up the CloudBot. Wake up, CloudBot. Wake up. And it's going to probably say it's a Silver Bonanza giveaway. Pay no attention to that. This is a Coinsomniacs giveaway. It is. Hello, Larry Powell. Good to see you. Uh, has it been? No, 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 no. Sandy, no 24 hour stream tonight. <laughs> no 24 hour stream we have been going for 3 hours and 43 minutes it was just a practice session for our uh, 24 hour stream possibility coming up a silver bonanza raffle has started what you need to do now is type exclamation raffle that will enter you in the contest I got Pastor Tim and the other Jimmy held captive they can't even enter tonight <laughs> So we are going to do a coin somniacs giveaway one and a coin somniacs giveaway two. And now it's probably time for Paul to figure out what those are going to be. It's been a good night. We've got Pastor Tim and the other Jimmy here. Hmm. You know what I think? You know what I think? These don't get a lot of love. They probably need more love than they get. Here's what we're going to give away. By the way, you have a minute and 30 seconds. And at the end of a minute and 30 seconds, Paul's giving it away. So uh, get entered now. Here is what we're giving away. A 1964, 90% half dollar. That one is a P from Philadelphia. There's another 1964. That one is a D. We'll make the D giveaway one. We will make the P giveaway two. So giving away some night. We didn't find any silver, but by golly, we can give it away, can't we? You think that's a good giveaway? I think that ought to work. Looks like I missed a good stream. Well, we had fun, Larry Powell. We had uh, Pastor Tim and uh, the other Jimmy here helping us out. They drove in from uh, Tennessee, 10 hour drive to be here today. Uh, if you haven't entered, exclamation raffle, you want to enter now. The clock is getting low. 16 seconds. We have only 27 people entered. Boy, your chances of winning will never be higher. I'm putting it on the screen. There's five seconds left, three seconds left. All right, I'm going to pick two winners here. Uh, this is for giveaway one. This is a 1964D Kennedy 90 percenter. Good luck, everybody. Joe Layton. Congratulations, Joe. You have won a 1964D. Now I'm going to give away a 1964P. Good luck again, everybody. Heather's Chubby Hubby, congratulations. All right, Joe Layton and Heather's Chubby Hubby, you both need to send me an email, paulsparetime at uh, yahoo.com. And in that email, you need to claim your prize and give me your address so I know where to ship it. And congratulations. Hey, maybe we can deliver some stuff. 
Exactly. I got my delivery crew here and put the domino sign on the top of the vehicle going home. Stop by and make the coin deliveries. There's other chubby hubby saying sweet. Woohoo, the year I was born. All right, Joe Layton. Congratulations. That is awesome. All right, everybody. It is 2 o'clock, 2 a.m., and that is uh, kind of closing time around here. So, uh, first, I want to thank uh, my moderators, and I appreciate your help very, very much. I could not do this without you. Thank you. I want to thank uh, everybody in green for being a member. I appreciate you all greatly. I want to thank every, all the subscribers that were in, all the guests that were in. Um, we appreciate you. Still having 40 people at 2 a.m. still amazes me. 64 likes. Very humbling. Thank you all very much. Hey, Paul, spare time. Can you send mine to Joe Layton so he can have the set? That is very generous of you, Heather's Chubby Hubby. I sure can. Very, very generous of you. Joe Layton, you got a pair of birthday coins now. You got the P's and the D's. So you only have to send me one email, though, Joe. You are getting off easy. <laughs> um, so thank you to the Super Chatters. Unbelievable generosity. And I will be sharing that with uh, my two cohorts here. And I can't thank you two enough. We got Pastor Tim and the other Jimmy here. Ten hour drive. That's crazy. It'll be a story, something you two will be talking about hopefully for a long time. As a good memory, it was fun to uh, see you guys tonight. We got some more coin business to take care of tonight. We're going to be up at least a little while uh, before we release them back to the hotel. We may see each other at a uh, coin show here in uh, Bentonville tomorrow. Uh, first, you, the other Jimmy, you got anything to say to everybody? Thanks, everybody, for coming by and giving us a chance to hunt coins for you. All right, Pastor Tim. Well, I'm glad to meet you and uh, come out here. We had a good trip out and uh, had a pretty day. And uh, so and uh, glad everybody come out. And uh, hello, everybody. You had never seen me before, I guess, so, or me or other Jimmy, either one. So, uh, you know, you got to see us now. Probably didn't, wasn't nothing fancy, but anyway. But uh, you know, I'd like to say hello to everybody, and uh, y'all have a good day. So. All right, well, thank you both. It was nice having somebody in the coin compound with me on a coin Somniax. It's a first. So uh, thank you both very much. You took all the work off of me. I got to just sit back and have fun tonight. Uh, awesome stream at Pastor Tim and the other Jimmy, says Donna Helton. Thank you all. Uh, nice show, says John Jacobs. We appreciate that. So I guess um, we're going to be doing the ball game thing for the rest of the week. But on Sunday morning at 10 a.m., we will be doing a double header. We're opening two mom and pop penny boxes. I have sent emails out to the donators so they know that they're up for this week. So we will see you. Uh, we hope you join us at 10 a.m. on Sunday uh, for the mom and pop penny boxes. If you've never seen one, they're a lot of fun to watch open. And you never know what you're going to find. And uh, so uh, we will be back next Saturday, not this Saturday, next Saturday the 22nd uh, with a six box live stream going for 32 streams in a row with silver. So uh, we'll see what happens. That would be awesome if we can get to 32. Mm -hmm. Thanks again, the other Jimmy and Pastor Tim. And all of you out there, get some sleep. And I will see you again when the other Jimmy and Pastor Tim and Paul has more spare time. Good night, all. Good night.